All right, what's up, YouTube? Check in, check in. As always, we're going to wait a couple of minutes so notifications can get set out. Uh, if anybody wants to tune into this live stream, uh, feel free to put how you feel, any questions, comments, concerns that you may have uh, in the live chat section or if you're seeing this after the fact, down in the comment section below. Uh, I'm here with Mike Need again, and we're going to talk about the title of this video, How Can You Quit Your Job? Or I personally recommend that you quit your job. Uh, and go out and make ninety thousand dollars your first year. And we actually live in three places right now. So on uh, Instagram, if you're not following JTLs is on Instagram. Follow JTLs is on Instagram. We also live on Mike's Facebook as well, and as well as this YouTube channel. All right. So let's run through my breakdown really quickly. Then we'll cover the most uh, commonly asked questions. And uh, this is tailored around the whole appliance repair business. You guys know that this weekend we had another event. And hey, I want to thank everybody that came out to the event, everybody that supported the event, whether it was past or previous events. I'm going to also let you guys know that we're going to do another class in November as a thank you for you guys, since there are so many of you that want to get out there and get up and running and start making money right away. So we are going to add a class in November. Stay tuned to the end of this live stream to get that date. And you guys always know it's first come, first serve, so you can take advantage of that. All right. So appreciate our class October. October, excuse me, October. It's going to be a uh, second class in October, not yeah. November, right? So appreciate all 27 people that's in the live chat now. Hit that thumbs up button, comment where you're watching this from. So this is my breakdown on how you can make $90,000 your first year in business after you quit your job, right? And uh, if, if this is your first live chat as well, quick housekeeping note, uh, we're not ignoring you. We always get through all the questions, comments, concerns in the chat. At the end of the video, because we might answer your question as we go through our spiel, right? So, three service calls a day at one hundred and twenty-five dollars a service call, right? If you're an appliance repair person, uh, if you came through our boot camp, or if you just know about appliance repair, this is very realistic, right? To do three service calls a day at one hundred and twenty-five dollars a service calls, uh, third-party warranty companies will pay you this, no problem, all day. Right. And this is doing only three jobs and you can interject whenever you want to. Right? Uh, that's going to give you three hundred and seventy five dollars a day. If you do the bare minimum that we're going to use for this example, which is three. And I'll tell you why we're using three here in a second. Uh, at, if you make three hundred and seventy five dollars a day and you work Monday through Friday, you're going to make one thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars a week. Right. If you work forty eight weeks out the year. The reason why I'm using 48 is uh, let's assume that you're going to go on vacation. You're going to take time off for Christmas, Thanksgiving, your birthday, your kid's birthday, whatever else it is. And let's say uh, when you add it all up, you're only going to actually work 48 weeks out of that year and not the, the entire year because nobody works the entire year. All right. You're still going to make $90,000 a year. Right. And I know a question that a lot of people will have, which we'll go ahead and address it now is, well, what about taxes? How much of that does Uncle Sam have to get? Well, you're your business. And as you heard Mike say plenty of times and refer you to the books that he's referred me to, that as a business, you're going to pay very little, if any, taxes if you structure your business the right way. So you don't have to worry about uh, if you was working a job making ninety thousand dollars a year and you bring it home seventy five. Right. If you structure things right, you could bring home as close to that 90, if not all of that 90, every single year in your pocket, right? Um, get a good CPA, right? We're not going to turn this into an accounting class. So get a good CPA, read the books that we recommend to you guys in other videos, and you'll be well on your track to, to keep your money once you make it. But uh, for the sake of this video, I want you to understand that when we say 90,000, we're talking about 90,000 that is going to be in your pocket, all if not most of that. Uh, if you structure your business the right way. And uh, another thing, too, when it comes to structuring your business the right way, this is something that you do throughout the year. It's not at the very end of the year. You got all of this money. Now, what can I do with it uh, in order to not pay taxes on it? Right. So you need to be uh, educating yourself on taxes and working with your CPA all throughout the year. So you already know where your money should be going. How can you move your money around uh, and, and things of that nature? OK, moving on. Longest time to date per service call. This is based off of the students that, that have came through Appliance Boot Camp, left Appliance Boot Camp, came back as alumni, and just talking with them. And out of all of the ones that I've spoken with, 
the longest it takes one of our students to do a service call is two hours. So this is you came to this weekend training, you go out and do it, you brand new. Uh, it takes two hours at the longest for somebody brand new. Now, granted, the more you come uh, come and, and do more service calls and come follow up with Mike, uh, I see Mike do some jobs in 15, 20 minutes. So you will get faster as time goes along. But let's assume that you're going to take the longest time uh, ever compared to other students that came through this class. It's going to take you two hours. So remember I said three service calls a day. Uh, if you're doing three service calls a day, it's going to take you, let's say, two hours per service call. Uh, you work in a six-hour workday, right? So you work in six hours a day, uh, which is probably less than what you're working now. If you're working full-time, working an eight-hour workday, working six hours a day, five days a week, that's a 30-hour work week. And that's a part time job for many people. Right. So this is not even assuming that you put in full time hours. Right. If you choose to do an extra service call and, and work eight hours instead of six, that's up to you. But assuming that you do this part time, three service calls a day, don't worry about 125. You can make 125 all day per service call with warranty companies and the alumni that came to this class already uh, know everything about that. So you guys can check it out. So. 30 hours a week. And if you wanted to know how much is that per hour, assuming you only do 30 hours a week because you want to get off early and watch TV or go out to eat or whatever, that's the equivalent of you making $62.50 per hour, right? So if you're working a job right now and you're not making $62.50 per hour, it is my opinion and my opinion alone <laughs> that you're better off quitting your job once you set up your appliance repair business and work in this uh, like this. I'm going to stop here before I get into the questions over there. See if Mike has anything he would like to add. Appreciate all 55 people that's here on YouTube. Smash that like button. Comment how you feel. If you disagree with me, you know, it is you free to say you disagree with me. If you have any questions about anything, put it there. We will get to the live chat at the end. But go ahead, Mike. Okay. All these numbers are exact. You, you can't do these numbers. And the people who are coming to Applied Boot Camp, they are seeing these numbers. And that's why they walking in and quitting their jobs. With me, uh, I would like to have a little buffer. And, I, and mainly it's me because I don't want me to, people to come here, uh, go to uh, start doing service calls, quit their jobs, and then uh, realize maybe two or three months down the road, they might not like doing appliance repair. Uh, so uh, that's the main reason why I say get the buffer up, because I want to give you a time where you can actually prove the concept that this is what you want to do. When you first get out there, you start making money. Uh, you everybody loves it then. But once that honeymoon stage is over with, kind of like when you get ready to get married, when you planning the wedding and you the reception and all that and going on your honeymoon, all that's fun. But once that wears off and you get into the grind of it, when um, you actually out there every day doing it every day and it becomes your job and it becomes your business, then you decide you can see then if you actually like it or not. And I would hate for you to quit your job and to realize then that you didn't like it. Now, when I talk to other people, they say they don't like the job they're going to and they're not making nowhere near this money. Uh, they need the money more so than they need the fulfillment of having a job that they like. So I can understand that. So uh, like I say, that's why I say the buffer. Uh, like I was telling JT, uh, I might need to change my approach because uh, I was just thinking if uh, maybe when I first went into business and I got, I got laid off, he was asking me, uh, would I have taken a job? I got hired. I, I got. I had an interview. I was telling him about an interview, the last interview I ever had. Uh, after I started my business, I got an interview with Honda, where they make the cars. They had like a, a little satellite place out in Talboro, North Carolina. And I remember uh, I sent. I had sent my resume there one time before, and they called me. And um, it was going to be a nice job. And I went to the interview. I arrived at the interview late because I was actually working jobs. That I couldn't, I, I got to the interview was late. They were sitting around waiting for me. When I got into the interviewing session, this is a true story. We sat in there, and back then I had my pager, and my pager kept buzzing, kept buzzing, buzzing. And I kept looking at my pager. In the middle of the interview, I told them, I said, I'm sorry I wasted y'all time, but I got to go to work. <laughs> and I, I, had, I told them I, I couldn't take the job. I had to go to work. And I got up, and I, I, I had my little duffel bag in my truck. And I was going to go to like McDonald's and wear a change and go back and finish. I just asked the guy, I said, you don't mind if I go change clothes real quick. I, I, I got to go to work. And I left. And that was the last time I ever uh, wrote a resume, sent the resume out or 
or anything looking for a job. So I actually know how these people feel when you first start your business and it's actually out there running and you making money and you go back. And I remember walking into the manufacturing facility, not seeing no cubicles and they had the cubicles in the middle of the uh, production floor. Not all, all those feelings of why I hated uh, corporate America came right back over me. And uh, I had just came from out of my truck riding around in the fresh air. Uh, it was springtime. I could see the flowers. I could stop when I, I, I had all the freedom in the world. I just couldn't go back to it. So that's what JT and I was uh, talking about. So I, was, I said, maybe if I tell people, I would like for you to have that, that three to four month buffer. Uh, it makes me feel better. And it makes me know that you have actually worked it long enough to prove that you actually love doing this business. But maybe work it, maybe something like a Dave Ramsey plan where I say, uh, have a uh, save $2,000, $1,000 for your household. Uh, most um, household emergencies, uh, can be covered up with a thousand dollars or less. So save a thousand dollars for your house and save a thousand dollars for your business. If you have an emergency to pop up in your business. So if you save two thousand dollars out of two thousand dollar emergency fund and then start working the actual uh, percentages, like I told you, maybe then you can walk away from your job if your job is that bad. Because I've been talking to people here lately that I don't know if the, the political climate or whatever, but they're just telling me the people on their job are just really giving them a hard time. To the point where grown men are having to go to uh, to the HR department and actually tell on the supervisor, almost like you were in high school, telling the principal. So, uh, so if it's getting that bad and you just can't take it anymore, uh, or you some people who are uh, who actually have jobs and not paying a lot of money, and like I say, if you go into a job paying fifteen dollars an hour, uh, one stop can can cover what you'll be making that whole day. So maybe I need to go back and relook at how I'm telling people that. And like I said, mainly while I was doing it. I wanted to do that to uh, to give me more comfort that when you left your job, that you actually uh, had proven that you wanted to do this business and you had enough of buffer if something did go wrong. You can actually get back to uh, to even board while while hurting you and your family. A couple things, Mike, before we move on. OK, one. And we're going we gonna to do this live. By the right. Business. Right. <laughs> How much buffer did you have when you got laid off? I didn't have no buffer. I 20 have... years later, you all right. Yeah. 20 years yeah. later, I'm good. I have no buffer. Yeah. Five years ago. I spent all of my money on trucks and a van and I had really no buffer five years. And I wasn't making three seventy five a day. I'll be honest with you. I was not making three seventy five a day five years ago when I bit, when I first started as a full time entrepreneur. So I, I do agree with what you're saying uh, to a certain extent. Like, uh -huh. like uh, I, I believe that if you have like one month's buffer. Right. So you take a month. Uh, to, to get your business set mm -hmm. up, you get your EIN, your business bank account, separate your personal assets, you know, everything that you learn in the class, save up whatever your bills are for a month, whether that's $800 or $2,000, right? And then I think, man, you might as well just do it, though. You yeah. might as well do it because, I mean, because it's a proven system. And uh, besides just me and Mike, right, if you somebody that read business books, this is not just our opinion. People that are way richer than us um, we'll talk about a philosophy of if you don't have anything to fall back on, uh, nine times out of 10, those individuals uh, become very successful because you don't have a job that you can go back to and, and that'll help you float until the next pay period. So uh, by me and Mike both being prime examples of somebody that, that didn't have a buffer, right? Uh, you can do it without a buffer, but I do uh, understand that, hey, it, it is wise if you could have yeah. a buffer. But I personally think if you got one month's buffer and you came through the class and, and another thing too uh, to touch on, and then we'll get through the commonly asked questions and uh, then we'll get to you guys' questions in the chat as well, is that um, another point that you made is uh, we don't want anybody to come out not serious. So for the all of you that are watching, the 65 plus people that are here live, uh, first of all, thank you for tuning in. Hit that thumbs up button. Comment where you're watching this from. But uh, I would like to say that if you're not serious about it, uh, whether it be uh, want to learn how to fix appliances is one aspect of it, or you just want freedom, right? Because to me, that is why I think people come to appliance boot camp and then come back to appliance boot camp because this frees up your time. You can work six hours a day, right? Making $62.50 an hour. Right. And then enjoy the rest of your life. Right. Uh, fi fixing appliances is an amazing job. Right. I encourage anybody that has an interest to it to first check out uh, Mike's channel, Appliance Bootcamp on YouTube. Right. So if this is something that you kind of eh, 
I don't know about. Check out the free content on YouTube. But if you really, uh, if you're ready to take that next step, invest in the boot camp, come out here. Man, uh, if you saw my post on, on Instagram, I call this gladiator training when you come out here. <laughs> so you come out here to gladiator training and, and we preparing you not to be an employee. We preparing you to set yourself up, start your own business. If you're somebody that wants to do it part time, you know, at the end of the day, it's your life. But you are equipped to leave here and quit your job, in my opinion. Again, th these are not the opinions of, of Mike Sneed or, or anybody else. This is just JT Hustle's opinion is that I do believe that once you leave here, you are equipped with as far as the technical knowledge of doing this. Because when I say where we are, this person has two hours. This is not somebody that's been doing it 20 years. This is somebody that didn't know nothing about appliances, came here for a weekend, went back home, set up their business and started doing it. So, right? so this is not somebody that has uh, 10 plus years of technical experience. Somebody came here for a weekend, went back home, takes them two hours uh, to do a, a service call. They're making 125 a service call. If they decided to do it three a day, they're at 375 a day. Right. So uh, anything else before we, we jump through those questions and then yeah to them? Yeah. Once again, uh, like I said, I'll tell you that I know I sleep better when I got that buffer and it, that buffer has saved me so many times. But I will say this. Uh, the guys that, that came to appliance boot camp and didn't go out and actually implement it. When we asked them why they hadn't done it, the first thing they told us, I didn't need the money. So the, so that, that that is proven. If you don't uh, if you somebody who who's not really hungry and, uh, and you're comfortable. Uh, most of the time, you're not going to do it. It's kind of like water. Water going to take the path of least resistance. So if somebody come here and they, they say, I think it looks nice what y'all are doing. But if I'm making enough money and I'm not really hurting money-wise, I'm not going to really push it. Even the, uh, the guy who takes two hours, um, he, he, he's happy at his job. To be honest with you, he's happy at his job. He's not somebody looking to get out. The ones that's coming here looking to get out and they just totally can't take their job anymore and they need the money. They the ones that's going out here knocking it out. They the ones who are who are uh, uh, who, who full steam ahead. And they the ones who are quitting their job. But we do have people who come here because of the interest, and they 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 like what we're doing. But they're not really uh they 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 okay they they're comfortable with their jobs. And like uh, we got a guy out here today just uh, stopped back in training. He's retired, and he say he got enough money from his pension and retirement. He he's he actually on vacation. He's looking at this as vacation. He's just like coming out here talking to JT and I. So he, he likes it, but uh he's not really looking into going into business and doing it. He just he just loves what we're doing and want to be a part of it. So uh JT is right. Uh, when you if you're somebody who actually don't have to really go out there and really do it, uh you don't have the motivation to go out there and do it. So maybe sometimes that is the best method. Just burn the uh, burn the boats like they used to do in the back in the days. When you went to go conquer uh, another country, you pull all your troops off the boat and then you get them on shore and you set the boats on fire and you let them know, hey, no way we're going to retreat because ain't no way to retreat too. We got to go here and take care of business. So maybe that's what they're doing. They're burning their boats. Um, but yeah, either way will work. I know with me, it's just come more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you a dog and you hungry, <laughs> like and yeah. you got small kids and want to get it. Yeah. But uh, some other commonly asked questions uh, that I've been getting a lot, we'll address those. Uh, and then we'll get straight to it, is uh, what about the slow season, Mike? Uh, we do have a slow season in appliance repair. Slow season, usually it's between January, to about January to March. It's about one to two months. Uh, slow season is not meaning you're not going to do any service calls. Uh, slow season means, like right now, we're in our busy season. That means right now I'm booked up almost a week in advance, meaning if somebody called me today, um, I'm booking for Monday and Tuesday already. I, I'm, I'm totally booked. Slow season means um, if they call me today, I'm booking for Wednesday and Thursday. I'm just two, I'm maybe one or two days out. That's the slow season. It's not that you're sitting at home, nothing to do. It just means that you uh, your actual call volume is not coming in as much, but you still you still have full time, uh, full time, full schedules every day. Yeah. So it's, it's not nothing where you uh, it's not going to be where you uh, you got to go sign up for unemployment. It just means that you get a chance to breathe. You're only going to be maybe one or two days out. Cool. Cool. Uh, next thing um, is what about benefits? I know a lot of people say, uh, okay, you making eighteen seventy five a week, brand new, uh, working six hours uh, a day. But what about benefits? Um, benefits, you can you can attack those a couple of different ways. 
we have associations, uh, USA, that you can actually join. And you have MSA, you can join those associations. And you can buy your benefits just like you do your uh, with your company. Uh, you, they take a money. Your companies ain't giving you no free benefits. Look, uh, look at your deductible. Uh, they actually, uh, they're uh, pulling out your benefits. They pull you actually paying into there to get the benefits. So what happens? Our associations, you can come in together and um, y'all go in as a group and buy benefits. And you no, know, right now, uh, if you were to buy benefits, I think benefits now would cost people maybe about five, anywhere between five to eight hundred dollars a month that you're paying for your ben- medical benefits and stuff. Uh, with the association, it probably costs you about the same, but uh, you no, know, you can make that in one day, one or two days, um, and to pay it off. So you, know, you can buy your benefits. Cool, cool. Uh, next thing is, um, I, this is more so for the students that have came here as well. But uh, maybe uh, you've heard Mike say it in other videos before too about um, being business broke. Can you explain pretty much? What you meant when you said that uh, you've been business broke yeah. at one point in time <laughs> early on in appliance repair. And this, again, is it, it wasn't the business fault. It was just more of, if I'm yeah, getting it correctly, right. Right. it was just more so how you was handling your money. Right. So right. the money was coming in. It was just not knowing how to handle it properly. Not right. knowing how to handle it properly, making bad decisions, uh, hiring people and not having procedures in, in place when you hire people and stuff. Just uh, total, total a lot of business mistakes. And I always people ask me, say, well, how do you learn how to do business? I say, I went broke several times and not not tell people that uh, a lot of times people think and I'm thinking about employee broke. And I'm not talking about employee broke. When I'm talking about business, when you employee broke, that means that you don't have no money and you ain't got no gas money to get the work money. You got to call your relatives and your friends and ask them, can you borrow money to get to get someplace? Um, business broke is it means that I still got cash flow coming in. But my cash flow is leaving right back out. I mean, I'm able to service all my debts and stuff. And I'm just not able to save any money because every time I went broke, uh, my family never, uh, my family never, uh, never suffered. Uh, the times that I was, uh, I was broke. I still was paying for a private school for my kids. I was still paying my mortgages. How uh, many meals you missed? I ain't missed no meals. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was, uh, I, I never missed a car note. Uh, I, I, it, was, it was just the same, and, and I was able to service those debts. A lot of those debts, I'm paying two thousand dollars a week to, to get some of those debts and those lawsuits off of me. Uh, but, but with the business, the business is pushing off enough cash flow that you're actually able to service those. So, uh, being business broke and being uh, and being uh, being W two employee broke, totally two different things. You a W two employee broke, you're not gonna get any more money. Until uh, uh, the next pay, yeah, that's real zero because yeah. you ain't got no money coming in until you get paid again, and you gotta get to work. Uh, as a business broke, you have to uh, be mindful that I'm going out doing service calls. So if I go out and do service calls, I get four or five hundred dollars cash every day in my pocket. So it, it's not that I'm, I'm I'm broke. I got cash flow coming in, but as soon as I get that cash flow coming in, I gotta send it right back out, and I'm just not able to keep any of it in, in, in my pocket. All right, so it just means you weren't able to save. You weren't able yeah. to save. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing I have here is a uh, confidence. Uh, when I was talking to the Mike before we went live about doing this video, this is more so uh, talking to our alumni, uh, all of the students that have came, and all of the students that have already booked to come proactively because we've had uh, a lot of students come in, and all of them may not have the opportunity to come all the way back. So this live stream is really talking to them, but it can help anybody that's interested. In starting this business. So we decided to just do a live stream for everybody. So not only can the alumni see it, but also anybody that's on the channel that's interested in knowing this uh, can see it. But this last point is talking more so to the people that are new. Uh, maybe you're a new subscriber. You don't even know what Appliance Bootcamp is. Uh, maybe you don't even know what we're talking about at all in this video. Uh, and uh, depending on what other videos you have seen on this channel, uh, I, I've seen some new subscribers believe that what we're talking about on this channel is almost like a fairy tale or too good to be true, right? Which is not so. We give you examples of how to do businesses. Uh, we have people on this channel giving testimonies, and all of those videos are on the channel now uh, for anybody to go back and verify. But for the benefit of anybody that's new, I think that what it boils down to, if you're somebody that doesn't believe that this is possible uh, or it is not a proven system, uh, ultimately, it comes to confidence, right? So as a brand new entrepreneur or somebody that's aspiring to be an entrepreneur, watching two fellas in a live stream video that you don't know from anybody say, hey, you can quit your job 
and make $375 a day and not miss a meal and anything like that, it may sound like far-fetched. So what I want to encourage you guys to do is go back when you get a chance, check out some other videos on this channel, check out Appliance Bootcamp on YouTube. If you want to know more specifically about appliance repair and things of that nature, and then once you're up to speed, you guys will see that, hey, what we're talking about is what uh, we have been doing for months now, helping people get out there and become entrepreneurs. And I think those people that think that this is too good to be true just comes from an environment where maybe where you live at and the people that you know, they don't talk like this, don't think like this, don't make this kind of money. However, that doesn't mean that that money cannot be made. So I want to encourage you guys, hey, if you're brand new to the channel, you don't know who we are. Uh, we could be lying about all of this. Go check the old videos on this channel when we break stuff down, show you other businesses you can start. Uh, look at the testimony videos when we have people that have went through the training, came back, and now doing everything that they're doing. And then if this is something that interests you, come out to the training, go to the online course, take the training. But I really just want you guys to, to be inspired that there is more to life than maybe your current situation. So if you're in a situation, I think the last hourly job that I can remember, again, this was over five years ago, might have been like $22 an hour, right? Which is not much, 40 some thousand a year, I think. Um, but if you somebody making $22 an hour and somebody tells you you can quit your job and make $62.50 an hour working for yourself and have to pay very little, if any of that in taxes, you might say, you know, that's far-fetched. But once you learn business, you learn entrepreneurship, you see how, okay, these aren't just people that cut on the camera one day and started just trying to sell people dreams, but these are real entrepreneurs. Mike has been an entrepreneur for 20 years full-time. I've been doing entrepreneurship full-time for the last five years, and we're really successful, right? So uh, just wanted to add that. Anything else, you, any message you have for people that think that this is too good to be true or have suffered with confidence? Uh, people do it every day. <laughs> Uh, people have been doing this for every day. This is not something new, JT and I, uh, just, just we, we stumbled upon. It happens every day. The guy who's out there pulling those lawnmowers behind his truck, he's making over $375 a day. He's figured it out. The, uh, the Hispanic guys who walk across the border uh, last night and all they got is their helmet. they making over $375 a day. They know that. Everybody else knows that besides the people who go to the jobs. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's easy to do. It's, uh, it's not something, uh, no magic formula and stuff that we have. And yes, we are scared once you get out there because all our lives we've been conditioned, go get a job, go get a job, go get a job. And now you're going to go against that grain. Uh, not only is the back of your brain going to be telling you, you need to go get a job, but your, everybody around you is going to be telling you, go get a job. And yes, it's going to be scary. But once you get out there and you actually see that you can do it, you'll be like these other guys where I'll be out here begging them, man, please don't quit that job. And so, yeah, it, it happens. It happens. And yeah. for those people who, uh, who who do say, oh, my job is good. I'm comfortable. I, I don't want to stop. Well, just wait. Just wait until you're about 45, 50 and you start getting close to retirement. That's when they come looking for you. They're going to tap you on your shoulder. They're going to make it hard for you. And once you get once they get you out of that job, when you're 45 and 50, it's hard to get back to where you were again. Uh, then it's hard to go back and get a job. And you wasted the best of your years and your youth for somebody else. And they don't want you anymore. Uh, he, talking to a school teacher um, the other day. Here she is, her, uh, her last two years for the retirement, and, the, uh, and she teaches dance in the school system. And she's been doing that almost 30 years, and they decided now that they're going to watch her call. They, uh, they're going to cut back the dance program to only uh, 70% or 60%. So when they done that, her pay got cut, uh, 70, 70%, 60%, <laughs> and in her retirement years. And this is supposed to have been the best years of her life and she was looking for these years, which they're going to base her retirement on. And what, what happened when they cut her, uh, cut her, uh, cut her hours and cut her uh, pay? Now she doesn't uh, qualify for the benefits. So now she got to come out of her pocket for the benefits. And she don't know if she's going to be able to go back and teach these last two years. She might have to quit because she's not going to have enough money to pay her bills or uh, be able to pay for benefits because she's going to lose the benefits. Cool, cool. And all right, we're going to run through the chat. Since we're live on multiple places, we're going to start where there's the least amount of questions and then work our way to YouTube. So are there any questions on Facebook? No, I don't have any questions on all Facebook. Right. Can you uh, check Instagram for us? If you're not following JTS is on Instagram, it's spelled exactly like this YouTube channel. Okay, you got Tenacity uh, 5. Preach. I love it. You're definitely speaking the truth. 
D. Field, 1986. Straight up motivation. This is what gets me going every day. Okay. Cool, cool. Can we scroll up to the top the other way? Okay. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. You got, wow, man. You got a lot of people following. All right. You got people just joining, joining, joining. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, Mr. Gentleman Hicks. What's good, JT? How, how up, are y'all? Okay. Tenacity Five saying what's good. Uh, the gentleman in for Jersey. Uh, Mr. Gentleman Hicks, want to know how do we get started? Cool. If you want to get started again, I recommend uh, this approach because I tell everybody, you know, what I mean, you don't. Uh, well, if you've been following me for a while, you guys already know who I am. You know who Mike is. But if you're brand new and you don't know what's from anybody, start with the free content. Right. It doesn't cost you anything to watch this video, to watch other videos. So just like you would uh, in any other situation, allow us to prove ourselves to you. Go back, watch old videos, appliance boot camp on YouTube. We'll give you the appliance boot camps. This channel is, is more of like a melting pot of multiple income streams and different businesses. But check out the content. It costs you nothing. Uh, if after that you want to get into it, uh, we got appliance boot camp online um, and we got uh, the live event as well, uh, which we just added another date. So you can come out to that. So that's my advice to anybody that wants to get into it. Hey, uh, we're not one of those people that's running a bunch of ads saying pay us up front. Like, hey. We already made videos telling people about the business, showing you how you can go out and really make this money before you get here. Because then you say people are already making, yeah, uh, making the money before they even come here. So it's basically like they come in here virtually for, for free. free. Yeah, we have yeah. we have students that actually uh, wanted to join, but they couldn't get in the class. But they said, forget that. They're going to go ahead and get started before they got here. We got several students who's coming into classes in September and October who already uh, told us, hey, I done made all my money back before I even got to the class yet and still yeah. making money. And they're saying, hey, people are calling me left and right to come out here and fix stuff. Yep. Yep. So definitely. So I appreciate everybody on Facebook. Appreciate everybody on Instagram. Um, also, uh, now it's time for YouTube. And also, all 69 of you guys hit that thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, comment where you're watching this from. And let me know if $62.50 an hour because uh, we broke it down the hour because I think a lot of people out there that's working a job, that's that's what they want to know, how much I'm making an hour. But we gave it to you, $18.75 a week, $62.50 an hour, working 30 hours a week, $90,000 a year. So however you want it, it's up there. Just let us know how you feel about that uh, compared to what job you're working right now, right? So if you're making more money than that, how many hours are you putting in? Shout out to BK from the Rockies at JT Hustles. Congrats on getting over 40K subs. Uh, keep up the great content. Appreciate you, BK from the Rockies. And I want to thank all of you guys out there. This channel would be nothing without you guys uh, hitting that subscribe button, sharing this video with people that uh, you think it could help. Uh, I encourage you guys to continue to do that. Uh, again, we want people to, to have avenues to make more money, right? So, again, why I think people should quit their job, if you're going to go this route because you make more money, uh, we do have other avenues on this channel. Uh, if this doesn't interest you, making money online, being a courier, all the other stuff. So definitely appreciate you guys for hitting that subscribe button. Thank you for over 40,000 subscribers. Share this video or other videos on this channel with people that you think uh, that you think it can help. Uh, for sure, for sure. We just want people to make more money. Checking in from Detroit, shout out to Seattle. Is appliance repair and cell phone repair uh, compatible businesses? Uh, well, Mike used to do both. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I know both. I kind of stumbled <laughs> yeah. into cell phone repair. I had a major company I was doing their appliance repairs. They wanted me to do their electronics. And I stepped into the cell phone repair business like that. And it was just as much demand there. So, yeah, it'll work. Yep. Shout out to Florida. Shout out to Mobile, Alabama. Oh, man, hoping I can sign up for this one. Absolutely, you guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and announce it now. The link is in the live chat. If you're watching this after the fact, it'll be down in the comment section by this point in time. And we're going to do October the 5th. Right. October, October the 5th. Link is already in the live chat. For the uh, and that'll be the last one of the year. Last one. Of the year. All right. So uh, we already sold out for September, October one time already, and November. Uh, December is you know holiday season, so nothing there. But we're gonna do another one in October. The link is in the live chat. If you're watching it live, uh, scroll up to the top, you'll see it. Or if you're watching this after the fact, look down uh, in the description of the video to get it. Um, what's up, billionaire watching from South Carolina? Shout out to Gerard. Hi, Gerard. Uh, you guys met Gerard. He's one of the alumni. They gave his testimony on the channel. Has a warehouse now. Is doing very well with flipping appliances. Uh, you guys can go check out his video that's on this channel as well um, and, and see his testimony after coming to appliance boot camp. 
Uh, Sobriety Queen from New Jersey. Appreciate you being in here. Got Detroit in here. I don't understand. What do you repair? Major appliances. Major appliances. Refrigerators, washers, dryers, dishwashers, microwaves, uh, major appliances in your house. Cool, cool. I'm trying to see how to repair, uh, how to register now. Excuse me. Please, please, please have more uh, than this one class. I'm working at the moment on the road and don't have PC access right now. So, yeah, you guys, uh, next, we're going to do two in October. October the 5th, link is out now. Uh, just to be fair, we do first come, first serve. Yeah, 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 you click it, you register, and then, and then that'll be it. Um, so, yeah, we already sold out for the year except this class. Um, but if you don't make it into this last class, the online course will be uh, – I'll add that link, too, uh, down in the description if you can't make it to this last one or it sells out before you get there. Um, shout out to <laughs> – that's must be your guy right there. Go ahead. You're going to read this up. Where we at? Go, go down. Where, the, where you looking? Right here? Yeah. You want you want to read that one? Go ahead and read it. Uh, is it true that ABC is turning into a Ponzi scheme scam <laughs> that you all are making more money offering these classes than people are actually making after they leave your class? Is that true? Uh, I never <laughs> even heard of that. I never heard of that. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, I, I never heard of a Ponzi scheme or actually paying people to, <laughs> to yeah. actually join a Ponzi scheme. Now, nah, for years and years and years, I've actually paid people to actually let me teach them appliance repair. Uh, and I, for years, uh, my probably the biggest appliance repair people in this area, my biggest competitors, I created them. Uh, there were people who actually had lost their job. They came, uh, they came to me or they had lost their job. And I went to their house to repair their appliance. And we were talking and they told me their job had got lost. They had lost their job. And I told them to come work for me and gave them jobs and put them out to work. And they went out and started their own appliance repair business. When you saw Alex, if you go look at some of the old videos, that's how I met Alex. He had just got laid off. He was an engineer and uh, he was looking for work. And I told him to come work for me. He came to work for me. Uh, he went and started his own business. So now nah, these people, uh, I'm not getting no money. When they leave, I don't get no money. We don't get no money off of them when they leave. Matter of fact, they come back here anytime they get ready to. And like they say, people, you only paying one time. A Ponzi scheme, you buying in all the time. But nah, we only uh, nobody, no, nobody, we're not selling anything. We're actually teaching you. And then it goes beyond the classroom. Uh, once these guys leave, uh, I support them until they get up and running. Mm -hmm. So nah, it's, it's, uh, it's not no Ponzi scheme. Yeah, man. And, and nobody, <laughs> they just making. it. I know, up. I know. But, that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, honestly, like at the end of every live event, we share with you guys all of the students who have came through the class, where they from what they thought of the class, right? Reach out to any of them, right? We publicly make that known. Reach out to any of them, uh, have them come on YouTube or, you know what I mean? YouTube is free. Right. They could have made a YouTube video if it was a scam by now. There's no way we're going to scam that many people and nobody say, right, it's a scam, right? So you guys know who came through the class. Nobody has came back and said, hey, they, they stole my money. They What they teach is not real, right? So uh, it, it's legit. Uh, alumni come back all the time. Yeah, get positive reviews all and the you, time. You see the guys. You, you see the guys come to the class. You see them do the thing. Hey, the class was good. Then uh, one or two class later, you come back. They got their business shirts on. They are actually doing business and a Ponzi scheme. I'm actually still doing it. I, I don't. I don't teach you nothing that I don't do myself. So you see me when I do my videos. Uh, sometimes I still have my uniform on. I, I actually go out there and I do work. I, I actually get back in the truck. So not go out there. I can give you all uh, up-to-date information. So I'm back in the truck a couple of days out the week. Matter of fact, uh, uh, I don't know if it's going to be good because uh, JT and them heard some of the customers been calling in. They want my, <laughs> they want the, they want my nephew and them coming back. They say, <laughs> they say they good. <laughs> they won't be there. So maybe I need to get back out the truck because <laughs> they're saying, hey, the guys they normally come, they better than you are. Mm -hmm. uh, so I better, I better get back out the truck. But yeah, I'm, I'm out there in the truck. I'm doing it every day. And uh, I've been doing this for 18 years. So, no, nah, I'm not running no Ponzi scheme. Cool, cool. Uh, I need to learn this. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, link is in the live chat now. Uh, other links will be down in the comment section. Been trying to call you, JT. Go to the August 17th class. Hit me up when you can, bro. Yeah, text me, Gerard. Text me, and I'll call you after this live stream, man. But shoot me that text. I got you. Um, shout out to New Jersey. What's up, 89 Dr. Funk? Uh, I got to watch from beginning. I'm in upstate New York, Rochester. I want to start my own business. I definitely check it out. Experience, do you need it? No. Nah, we uh, we find out people came to some of the classes uh, don't even know how to use a ratchet or a screwdriver. So nah, nah. Yep. Hello from Miss Ann in the LBC, California. Appreciate you being here, Miss Ann. 
uh, is this boot camp online? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I'll put the links to all of that uh, after the fact. The only link that's in the live chat right now is the um, live event in October. Um, and we've also updated the uh, the online course as well, and it'll be updated again. If you guys didn't know, I'm going to use this time now since we got all 79 people here. Um, we, we added install since we got in the new building. Me and Michael are going to record that. That's going to be added today. Uh, handouts. Uh, somebody that was in the class asked for the handouts. Uh, the hands outs are already in there. So um, if you do get the online class, like you guys hear Mike saying, we moved from one, excuse me, from one building to the next building and added stuff. Uh, just because you bought the online course, don't think you got to rebuy the new stuff, right? I'm going to keep updating it as we move the new buildings and have more room to do more stuff. So you can just log back in later on and you'll have access to whatever uh, we added new uh, as well. Uh, I've made it past year one of my business. Let me scroll up one second. Uh, I made it past year one of my business, not in your industry, but I come to your page often for inspiration. Absolutely. Thanks, absolutely. Thanks. Uh, you, this applies to anything, man. Like you can definitely win in any industry, man. So, uh, and, and I don't know every business out there, but the ones that I know, um, I'm definitely going to share with you guys. So I'm glad that it is reaching people in other industries just to inspire you, not just me and Mike. But again, that's why we try to encourage people to come back. But again, uh, and maybe you can relate to this. Everybody is not uh, cool with being on camera, especially it's 84 people here now. Mm -hmm. So and you guys can say, uh, you know, whatever insults you want in the live <laughs> chat. Right. Me yeah. and Mike are cool with that. Yeah. We used to it. But if we was to get somebody brand new here. Right. They don't they don't want that. So um, but we do uh, when, when they're willing, we're going to have testimonies uh, continually added to this channel. Uh, working for someone else is a tragedy. Uh, real talk. This is not Amway. Uh, what's the name of the video where you talk about uh, the percentages? That's on your channel, right? Yeah, I, I, I got uh, you have to go through and look. I don't know the name of the video, but I talk about them all the time. I've done several of them. What I tell you about how to break out the five banking accounts. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, I think two each. Well, in. The state I live in, one definitely need to have at least 2K per household to cover just a month of expenses. Absolutely. Okay. So, yeah, I, I think it's wild. Like I said, I, I think people are equipped to leave uh, here and start their own business. But, you know, what I mean, Mike and me both agree that it is wise if you are somebody that can get that buffer together, get that buffer together. Mm -hmm. I think, well, what, uh, to be more specific, the people that come here and again, uh, we don't make you say how much money you make when you come here. But if you ever decide to come here and you make in minimum wage, which we define minimum wage as uh, to our knowledge, as low as seven twenty five. We got a gentleman here from New York um, who said that minimum wage is fifteen dollars uh, an hour. So we're talking about if you somebody that's working minimum wage and you just struggling to get by this. This is definitely right. Will change your life as soon as you set up your business. So there's no need, in my opinion, to struggle making minimum wage after you already got the keys to, to start making this much money or more, depending on what's going on in your area. Uh, because I say or more because you take like Gerard that's in the chat and like his video, you can say, well, I want to start flipping appliances, too. So I'm not just going to go out and sign up with these third party companies and then later on get cash customers. I'm going to add flipping appliances, too. So I'm going to buy them broken, fix them, resell them and, and do that as well. And the sky's the limit with you uh, as an entrepreneur. So uh, shout out to the 601. I hate working for somebody. Want my own business. Absolutely. You had the right channel. You had the right channel. Just got here. What business are we talking about? Appliance repair. Appliance repair. Uh, I got to get my license situated. All right. You're talking about driver's license? Uh, I guess so. Yeah, I'm assuming so. Yeah, because there is no license for this. Right, right. Yeah, but I'm, I'm assuming he's talking about his driver's license. All right, uh, I'm from Wilmington, North Carolina. Okay. All right, how do you get started? Again, for the benefit of those people that are new, I encourage you, hey, if, if you don't know who we are, you're brand new to the channel, watch the old videos. Give us an opportunity to prove to you why we have over 40,000 people subscribed to this channel. And then after that, if this interests you, come out to the boot camp if you can. Take the online course if you can't, and then get up and running with appliance repair. We got cell phone repair over there on the online course, and uh, and many more online courses will be uh, made and added throughout the end of the year. And also note that, like I said earlier, they're going to continuously be updated as we add new information to the live event. New information will come in that course as well. And just like the alumni of the live event don't have to pay to come back to, for the new information, 
uh, neither will those that invest in the online. That's right. Cause, uh, that's another thing too. You, you know that we're not uh, trying to scam nobody. <laughs> I don't know why they keep saying that, but uh, yeah, the alumni, don't, we don't charge you for the new information. We got anything, anytime the alumni want to come, they can come back. And that's another thing too. I always tell people, I said, no, if uh, a, a 18 to 20 year old, uh, I could I could do like the universities. I could hit them in the head for two hundred thousand dollars with a, a degree or some type of training that they're not gonna make any money with, and they'll leave and they'll think it's their fault. They will say, well, I didn't major in the right right uh, uh, field, or I, I got a bad break, or uh, the government is against me, or maybe uh, you know, some racist person won't give me a chance. You can get that. You can get over on a, a younger, a younger person like that. You can, you can, you can make them think that the reason they didn't succeed was because something they did. The guys who's coming to our classes, they're thirty-five and forty-year-old grown men, and they're coming here, and you're not gonna get nothing in over them. You try to run some BS on them, you're gonna get called out. And if you, they come here, and like I said, they come back all the time. We, if they came here and they felt like that we were just running some type of, uh, uh, just putting something over on them. These guys, you, you start doing that with a grown man, yeah. you're gonna get you're gonna you're gonna get dealt with, you're gonna yeah. get hurt. So these guys come and, and I always tell people the people we're going after are men 35 and older, um, who actually know that hey, this might be my last time at bat. And if I don't actually connect and, and get this thing correct, um, I'm not I might not be able to make it because they looking at it saying, Hey, I don't have enough to get to where I need to get to. Uh, and that's kind of like I tell people when they dating women and messing around with women when they get close to 30, you take one or two years off of a woman's life when she's 30 and not going to marry her messing around. You ask her for pro trouble. Same thing. If you come here with a grown man, 35 and older, and you, you feeding him some BS thinking, telling him he's going to be able to get his life together. And that might be the, uh, the last little bit of his youth that you messing around. You're going to have some trouble later on. So, cool. nah, we got to be straight up and serious with this. Cool. Uh Next one says, I will have a job to go back to by giving a two week notice to my current job or career. Don't burn bridges, people. Believe in yourself, but have some integrity and ethics. I'm going to start off with this one and I'll let you go. Ahead. I don't think integrity has nothing to do with it or ethics. When you're talking about creating a better life for yourself, right? Like at the end of the day, jobs don't care about 90% of the people, right? If you fail to perform for them, and they can't make the profit that they want to make after you. Last time I looked it up, six to eight times, whatever your salary is, is what they want to make from you. Even if you're not in a sales position, maybe you free up time uh, doing whatever tedious task you do that allows somebody else to cover that. Right. So I, I went and did the research. Right. So like what is what is ethical about you working a job for two more weeks struggling and then why why would you need to come back for a job? What is there that you can't do for yourself that a job can do for you? Right? Like you can make your own money, you can provide your own health care, you can provide your own benefits, right? There's nothing that, and again, I'm not I, I'm not bashing every job. And again, this is not for people that, like how Mike said, the people that are retired or you in a job that you love. This video is talking to the people that are are struggling financially, like Mike just talked about middle age. This is your last time up the bat. Right. What is a two weeks notice to go back to what? To go back to seven twenty five, to go back to fifteen, twenty dollars an hour. Right. So at the end of the day, understanding how big businesses work, you're you're an asset. Right. So as soon as you're not producing. Right. Let you get sick by some means beyond your control. And you got to be out of work for two, two, three weeks. And you don't got that much paid time off or whatever time they give you off. Right. Do you think they're going to have the, the ethical uh, wherewithal to be like, you know, uh, Mike was a good worker, but he, he fell sick. He'd been out for a month. Let's let him come on back and work. No, they need somebody to, to drop them fries, make them burgers, whatever it is that your job was, and they're going to keep it moving. So this is not an integrity or ethical thing. And as far as having a job to go back to, for what? Now, if you don't know, right, which is how most people are, if you don't know, how to make your own money, which is what we provide at the training and everything like that, then you will be somebody that says, okay, I need to have a job to come back to. But like I said earlier in this video, if you a dog, right, we're going to teach you everything you need to know. And I mean, why, why are you going back to a job? What job is going to take you with no experience? This is an example. The two hours, Mike, how, on average, how long does it take you to do a service? I know it depends, but on average for me, uh, 
15 to 30 minutes. 15 to 30 minutes with somebody that has almost 20 years of experience. Guys, brand new that leave here, he takes him two hours. So would you rather give two weeks notice and go back to a job, even if that job will take you back months later, they not going to give you nowhere near this. You can do this, right? And, and it ain't no interview process. Apply and hope they call you. Like, it ain't none of that here. No drug test. Yeah. No, no background check. Yeah, you can you have know, a felony and do this. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, like, we're not encouraging you to do, yeah. you know, anything negative. So don't take it wrong. But the whole idea is people, some people have a history, right? And, and now you're a changed person. You paid your debt to society. And this is a great start, right? Now, if you want to give a two weeks notice, give a two weeks notice, right? But I don't, I don't see any job starting you off with this, with no experience. Beyond this, what other job can you do and, and start off here, right? You want you want to touch on anything for me? Yeah, uh, I I remember uh, I was I, I've always been told that too. Take a give a two weeks notice so you can always go back and this and that. And I remember I used to I, I used to believe that too until I got laid off three times. <laughs> How much notice they gave you? They gave me they gave me two minutes to, to, <laughs> to get out. They had the sheriff there and they told me. If I they took my badge and I, I couldn't even pack up my um, the last time I uh, got uh, well the, when I was at Nortel the last time I was at Nortel got laid off I couldn't even pack up my uh, stuff in my office they had somebody else already had packed my stuff up in my office they had the sheriff out front they said uh, give me your badge if I see you coming back on property again we're gonna arrest you and they told us to go downtown to some hotel we got the hotel they had a big auditorium everybody there and they told us you had been uh, uh, they call rift uh, reduction in workforce, and don't come back. And this was as an engineer. <laughs> this was as an like engineer. The, the good job out <laughs> yeah. there. We'll do, don't like. come back. And so they gave me two minutes to, to, to yeah. turn around and get my butt out there, or they're gonna put the handcuffs on me. Yeah. After I gave them um, all those hours of work and everything I done, they gave me two minutes. Yeah. yeah. So how is it unethical if you say I'm not gonna give you two weeks notice when you're gonna give me two minutes notice? They get out of here. Yeah, right? two minutes notice. They Shout didn't, they North didn't, Carolina. Boy, they didn't care about uh, my if I had. Uh, they didn't care about my wife and kids, my health insurance. Nah, you an asset. <laughs> That's they it. Just get out and go. Yeah. Shout out to Austin, Texas. Uh, appreciate that. BK from the Rockies. Can I get the contract and subcontract to work out? Sign your Thomas. What are you talking about? Right here. I guess she's talking about with a um with appliance repair. Can I get the contract and subcontract to work out? Uh, mm. Uh, I, I don't know what you what you quite say. Reword that. Yeah, yeah Reword. you can clear it up. Yeah. Sign if you're still here. Clear it up. We'll jump into it. I agree with JT on this one. One <laughs> month saving, and it's time to move on. Oh, they're going to that they're financial gonna, freedom. They're going to Gerard leaving too. <laughs> Gerard. Yeah. yeah, but like how people say, and Michael even tell you this: like the numbers don't lie, right? Yeah. So again, like I said, I'm not telling somebody that doesn't know who we are and and been through the course to just quit your job today. Because two strangers on the internet told you to do this, right? So again, this is tailored towards the people that know who we are, people that came to the course, right? And, and really for the alumni, but we just pulling the curtain back so everybody can see that it makes sense, right? So again, once we prove ourselves to you by watching old videos, watching future videos, or whatever the case may be, then you will see, just like Gerard, who's an alumni, that hey, the, the numbers make sense, right? The numbers make sense. Where are you guys located? Silver, North Carolina. Shout out to Kansas City. Shout out to Mobile, Alabama. Plan on attending the ABC with you guys. The testimonials say everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because me and Mike can tell you, hey, you can make $62.50 an hour and do all of this. But that's why uh, we, we at the end of every course, we tell people come on. They say, this is where I'm from. This is my name. And this is uh, what I think of the course. Right. So if, if you wanted to. Right. Facebook is free. Like if you wanted to try to find somebody and hey, how, how much did they pay you to say that on the live stream, right? Like, right. And, yeah, so. and, and, uh, like some guys who is came, this live? Yes, this live. This Go ahead. Live. Some of the guys who came to the last uh, boot camp, uh, I was listening to them talk. It, 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 now, now that we're actually out here uh, telling people, there's a lot more appliance repair guys who are actually coming on YouTube now, telling you about the industry, and they're saying everything that we're saying here is the exact same across the industry. This right here, appliance repair, is the last of the skilled trades that hasn't came in and got co-opted by the government and the trade unions. So you coming out here and starting your appliance repair business would be just like you in the 1970s starting an electrical contracting company. Just think if you had an electrical contracting company now. You didn't have to have a license back then. Or you starting a plumbing company back in the 1970s. You didn't have to have a license back then. 
If you start an HVAC contracting company, you didn't have to have a license back then. Just think if you had it now, look how much money they make it. Where the appliances right now makes the same amount of money as those. This is a skilled trade, just the same as those. And it has the same thing. It has a residential side and it has a commercial side. And you, you, can, you can scale up just like those guys do. The money is not any different. So just think if you had a, just think and say, man, I wish I had a plumbing company. Well, you can get a plumbing company the same benefits from an appliance repair company as you would a, a plumbing company. And you don't have to worry about the trade unions coming down on you. You don't have to worry about the state coming down on you. Cool, cool. Uh, Drake Chap says, took the online course, ready to bust it. Send me the tool list, want to buy tools today. So um, it, we actually updated that before we even went live. So when you go on to uh, the modules, uh, you will see under the business portion, all the way down, it'll say handouts. You'll get the tool list, the uh, the the whole slideshow mm -hmm. of the live event, mm -hmm. and the order of operations. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, that's it. That you already have it. You just gotta log in, scroll down, and you can decide to download it and save it to your phone, print it out, whatever it is. But that's already in the course. And today we're gonna actually add installs, which again, it's not anything that'll stop you from going out to make money now, right? There's plenty of people that do this business and don't do installs, but we just want to add that to you, uh, the course as well. So if you ever want to do uh, installs, that's going to be added here soon as well. Um, got some networking going back and forth. Um, shout out to One Africa, One Africa, man. Honestly, like, cause I, I like when people get in the chat uh -huh. that are like, uh, that, that are skeptical. Uh -huh. So no disrespect to you. Uh, I'm not trying to, you know what I mean, come off disrespect to him or anybody else. Uh -huh. But I like when people uh, engage like that, so right. we have a chance to pretty much validate. You know, uh -huh. are we are we blowing smoke or or all this real? And I believe that that's a sincere person that mm -hmm. just wants to know. So shout out to you. Appreciate you being in the chat, man. And again, if you brand new, right? Just like I, I've been saying over and over again, allow us the opportunity to prove ourselves to you. Right? Watch the old videos. Don't spend no money if you don't like it. Go somewhere else, watch their <laughs> video and say, I like them better, and that's it. But if you like us, you know, you know, what I mean, we'll appreciate the opportunity to help you add to your to your income streams, man. But yeah, um, hey Mike, like to have the tool list also, if you don't mind. Absolutely. If if you uh I don't know if Kelvin Roberts is in the online course or if he came to the live event. Come to the live if you man, came to the live event, yeah, just, an email. Yeah, just email it yeah. to me and I'll send you the tool list and the um order of operation. Yeah, yeah. So you got it in your email now if you uh in the live event. If you're in the online course, it's, it's under the business portion, uh, very last tab, so it's easy to find. We'll have the tools list and everything else. Um, and, and see, that's something our alumni uh, came to us and told us we needed to do, is give them together a, actual tool, a minimum tool list they need to uh, actually uh, have when they leave here. So if you came to the previous live events and you didn't have that, uh, the one who just had, they got that email to them. But if you came to previous ones, you want to uh, get that tool list. Just uh, email me back from uh, just uh, send me an email and I'll send it out to you. Yeah, yeah. just reply back to the email yeah. you got when you first signed up. Yeah, yeah that email. And you uh, got an order of operation of what you need to do first, second, third, fifth, and, and starting your business. Cool, cool. Uh, let me see. What part of South Carolina is the boot camp located? It's in North Carolina, mm -hmm. Selma, North Carolina. Gerard Reed, again, this is an alumni. I can't stress enough, people, please take advantage of this golden opportunity. All right, cool, cool. Uh, just see them. Mm -hmm. See them network. Appreciate that, Gerard. Yo, coming in November. Looking forward to meeting you. Oh, we jumped up. Let me see where we was at. Um, cool, cool, man. Appreciate everybody that's in the chat right now. Um, comment where you're watching this from. Any questions you have? I'm trying to find my place. Um. My job career paid for my benefits, and it's almost five hundred dollars every two weeks. Cool, cool. You can make that much working for yourself. Yeah. Greetings, yeah. Mike and JT. What's up, Veracity Cash? I own my own property, but need some steady self income. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the other thing too. Um, when you, when you, when you, uh, a lot of times that's what we say. Uh, my job is it, is not your job. You can't give that job to your kids, your grandkids, or any of that. And when it's time for them to riff you, you'll find out quickly that <laughs> it's not your job. It's not your job. So uh, that's another reason why I like the actual uh, small businesses. The stuff that all the all the work that JT and I are putting in right now, all all the long hours and stuff, it's not going. It's not. It's not going to stop here. This stuff get passed down to our kids and grandkids. You know, my kids. My kids come in here and work. <laughs> my son just left. They come in here and work. My daughter works in here. 
So the, all this stuff is actually going to be passed down to them. So they, this is this is uh, we're putting in work not only for us, we're putting it in for our kids and grandkids. So when we get this stuff built out, our kids and grandkids still be reaping the rewards for this. You know, uh, once once you're done at that job, you can't tell your kids and grandkids, uh, go get your position. Who who? Um, looking forward to seeing an interview with a female alumni. Um, we did. Uh, Cheryl was in a couple of videos. Um, as well, she's one of the female alumni we had so far, and uh, and hopefully, uh, we do too. Like you know, again, we can't force anybody. I do kind of. At the end of the live event, I kind of force everybody <laughs> yeah. to at least say, hey, I was here. This is where I'm from. This is what I think. So uh, if you're thinking about coming, you know uh, what to expect and see that people all over the United States and all over, and all over the country now, since we had our first uh, student from uh, Ethiopia yeah. come in as well, too. So uh, but a after that, you know, everybody is not cool with getting in front of a camera in front of 70, 80 plus people. Right. And we ask people all the time to go and they said, no, nah, they're not quite ready to do the interviews. Cool, cool. I finally signed up now. Where's the link to pay for the course? Mike, Mike is going to send you that uh, as soon as this live stream is over. Yeah. Right. Um, I am wondering how in the world am I going to keep those same great benefits once I am on my own? I'm going to let you answer that one, Mike. OK. All right. Uh, how, 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 uh, he said it's five hundred dollars. Early in the chat, I think he said five hundred dollars every two weeks. Five hundred dollars every two weeks. So a thousand a month. A thousand a month. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as an employee, you you you'll start to think that that's a that that's a lot of money. Uh, as I stated yesterday, the guys that uh, actually came to the appliance boot camp, they got companies calling them up saying they're gonna give them two hundred dollars uh, extra an hour to go out and do a service call. All you need to do that is uh, 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 four four hours, and you got that you got that uh, taken care of. Uh, that's the real illusion that the uh, the businesses are giving you that they're actually paying that you're actually they're actually giving you something. They're not giving you nothing. You working and you earning that. You just don't get to see it. Uh, the amount of money that we're telling you that these guys are making that's how much they're making for their for the companies they're working for and more. But you just don't get to see that part. They cut all that part off and they give you just a small. They give you uh, you you should be making one hundred and twenty five dollars an hour. But they cut all that off and they give you uh, ten dollars an hour <laughs> and then they take another sixty dollars out of that and pay for you some benefits. And you think they, they're giving you something. No, you're actually earning that. You can actually take all your money. And this is another thing, too. Um, if you got benefits now, uh, they're not giving you that uh, at the end of the year. You're going to get you're going to get that as uh, as income that goes towards your income. And you got to pay taxes on that. So now not only are uh, the benefits they're giving you. They, you got to pay taxes on it. That's, can, that's considered your salary now. That's part of your salary. And guess what? If you uh, have a small business and you go buy your own insurance, guess what you get to do? It's a business expense. You write it off. So now that goes against you. That goes against your taxable income. So you, you're getting it for free now as a business owner versus now they're giving it to you and uh, they think that you get it to, but you got to pay taxes on it. So now if you move it over to a business expense, you get it for free then for real. Cool. Cool. And I'm going uh, I'm going to take a, a mathematical approach, mm -hmm. even though I ain't good with math. I'm going to use this calculator. So this is based off of working six hours a day. So let's say that you want to put this much money in your pocket and still pay for your benefits. You know, you're making sixty two fifty an hour. What if you work eight hours a day instead of six hours a day? Right. So if we do sixty two fifty. You do an extra two hours a day. So instead of working six hours a day, you can work a full day like you may be working at your job now. So now. Let's say sixty-two fifty times an extra two hours a day, right? What is that, Mike? One hundred and twenty-five dollars uh, extra uh, a day. Mm -hmm. If he do that all week long, let's say five five days a week, he has six twenty-five a week, right? You work four weeks out the month, you got twenty-five hundred dollars. You take a thousand of that and you go pay for your benefits. And you take the other fifteen hundred dollars and you buy your kids some nice stuff. Now, how, how did you work kids? How do you do that? We just added another what? Instead of working six hours, if you work eight hours, work eight hours. He can work eight hours. Uh, another thing, what? Uh, if he's going full time, now once he gets gets up to par in about six months, uh, you no longer will be doing just three. Uh, in about six months, you no longer can do just three stops. You could do five to seven stops. A good a good technician can do seven to eight stops. But I tell people just do five to seven. Uh, so if you done, uh, if you done just five, five to seven stops, uh, once uh, two, see five, 
to seven stops. How, how long do you think it'll take them once they get up to speed? How, um, how long do you think they work in there? I work a day. We do a 10, 10 a.m., 11 a.m., a 1 p.m., a 2 p.m., and a 3 p.m. That's how time that the customer can start. The reason why. Oh, so it's five hours a day. Yeah. yeah. The reason why I do that. So you're actually going to work less and make Right, money. right. The yeah. reason why I do this between eight, between 8 and 10. You got everybody trying to do like they do, get to work. I'm mm-hmm. not going to be sitting in traffic while they fight traffic and stuff in the morning. Mm-hmm. So we let them go to work and mm-hmm. let the school buses drop all the kids and stuff off. Mm-hmm. And then we, uh, our technicians come out. So they do the first stop at 10, do one at 11. At 12, we usually lunch say time. lunchtime, or we say that for emergency calls. Somebody got an emergency, we'll move them in. Uh, we do one, two, and three. The reason I stop at three, what happens at four o'clock? He got to go back home. He got to get back home and he got traffic. I ain't going to be caught in traffic. Now not gonna be caught behind school buses. So that's all we do. That's all we do. Now, if you uh if you wanted the electrical call, you wanted to pay for your uh uh pay for your health insurance, your health insurance is what five uh I, I think he said it's a thousand dollars a month, if I ain't mistaken. Thousand dollars a month? Yeah, I think he said five hundred dollars oh, every two weeks. Oh, five hundred dollars every two weeks. Oh, oh, man, that's easy to do. All right, five hundred dollars every two weeks. So let's say you do seven calls a day, you can do five days, that's a uh, it was 30, 35 calls uh, a week, week. Uh, times four, 20, 12, uh, that's 140 calls. That's 140 calls, what, uh, per uh, per month. So you're doing 140 calls per month. And you now you're, you say your health insurance is what? Uh, a thousand a month. thousand a month. Um, all you have to do is just come here right now, you're uh, – your electrical call, your service call fee is eighty five dollars. Um, all you gotta do is just uh, and that's just knocking on the door if somebody's brand yeah. new and don't know. Like just for showing up, you get a service call fee in in a lot of areas, not just this one, but this is yeah. One. All you gotta do is just electrical call. Uh, add uh, add another ten dollars to the service call fee. You add ten dollars, now you got one hundred forty. I got one thousand one hundred forty dollars. Uh, that's all you gotta do. Or you or you can just add an extra service call. Instead of you, uh, instead of you start uh, starting at ten, you can start at you can start at nine. If you start at nine, uh, that gives you uh, what? Uh, uh, at least an extra hundred and twenty-five dollars a day. Five times four times that give you uh, that uh, that give you twenty uh, twenty times eighty-five. That give you five ten. That's seventeen hundred dollars. Just add one more service call. That's how that's how you do it. It's simple math. That's how you do it. And that's what business owners do. Uh, we don't. We don't. Uh, we watch what call. We don't go there looking to uh, to uh, to get paid extra hours and stuff. If if I, if I got something coming up, if uh, that's why you say you can't you can't tax us business owners. You can't you can't put no tax on me. You, you try to tax me, I'm gonna pass it off to the customer. If I need uh, if uh, if I need health insurance, I'm gonna pass it off to the customer. I can just add two dollars, three dollars here and there across the uh, across all my service calls. I, I I I can get anything I want, and and so you you can't you can't you can't hurt a business owner. Uh, that's uh, that's another thing people talk about uh, with the child support and alimony and stuff like that. Uh, you don't see business owners hurting like that. You see people who have earned income hurting like that because with a business owner, uh, if you try to give me alimony, yeah, thank you, but I'm gonna pass it off to the customers. <laughs> so I'm not gonna pay it. The customer is gonna pay it. If you try to hit me with child support, thank you, but I'm not gonna pay it. I'm gonna I'm gonna break it off. Two or three dollars into every service call I go to, and that's going to pay. This I'm going to still get my same amount of money. And same thing, if you need to uh, have health insurance and stuff like that, uh, you just need to add a couple of dollars to every service call, and you get your money. Cool. Uh, what about locksmith business? I have no idea. I have no idea. I never worked in locksmith yeah. business. You can look it up and see. Yeah. Uh, see. Uh, I'm ready. How to join? Link is at the top of the chat. First come, first serve. Uh, we added a second date in October, uh, October the 5th. Is that okay? Thanks. I just sub. Yes, they appreciate that. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, I like to know about locksmith business. Also. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where y'all getting these. <laughs> I don't know. I think might have saw that guy that time he done it with the uh, the guy who came in. But he, 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 the guy that we had to, you had to take it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. He, that might be what they talking yeah, about. Yeah, but yeah, he, yeah. He, the, the family yeah. asked me to take it down. And uh, they was real cool people, real real nice people. So just out of respect for them, right? I, I just decided to take it down. I don't, they don't know why. I ain't even go back and forth with them. If I had to assume, uh, it, it could be possibly because um, 
they they might not want their family business information out there, which it wasn't nothing personal, but it was actually how they go out and make money. So just out of respect for them, uh, I did clear it with the gentleman. And so uh, it does make sense. If y'all if y'all saw that video, right, um, that's what it was. So I, I cleared it with the gentleman on site. We did the video together. Um, but after that, uh, his family reached out to me and, and was real respectful with me. I was respectful with them. And they just didn't want uh, to disclose that information in particular. And I'm not out trying to put anybody out of business. So uh, if, if that's what you're talking about, uh, yeah, and, until that family is okay with it, that, that video is gone. Maybe we'll come across another locksmith that, that'll uh, get on the channel. But yeah, that video is, is not going to be public anymore. Um, let me see. Uh, more problems and more value is equal to profit. A job should determine your value. That's true. Uh, how many job leads will third party companies give you? Uh, will it be enough to fulfill a three a day for four to six months until I can save a three month buffer? <laughs> they'll, give you, they'll give you 200 calls a day if you take them. Yeah. But I tell you that I tell you the limit to one to three calls a day. Yeah. And because uh, uh, you don't want to just go out here. It'd be like if you never lift weights before, you get up on the 400 pounds of uh, weight, think you're going to lift it. No, nah, you need to just do one or three calls a day. That's all you're going to be able to do starting off. And yes, they, you you have enough work uh, to go, go to the next 20 years. Yeah, We had one gentleman, Antonio, his testimony is on the channel, uh, and that gentleman. Um, as soon as he registered his business, zero marketing, he got like 15 a day. <laughs> like, And then he did, he did nothing but just go register his business. And his phone started ringing, yeah. right? So, yeah, it's, it's plenty of work out here. So getting three, again, this is conservative to give you time to take your time, two hours of call, uh, and you know what I mean, and build up your confidence. And once you feel confident, hey, you can go faster, you, you'll you get to Mike's level and can do 20-minute calls mm -hmm. and be in and out of there and, and you know what I mean, well, less like, than half an hour. And, and the three ahead. calls a day, that's you telling them that's all you want to do. Um, I'm telling you to tell them that. And that's what that happens now. They, the guys are telling them they only do one or two calls a day. And the warranty companies need them so bad. The warranty companies are telling them, hey, I'll give you an extra $200 if you go out there now. And that's why these guys are saying, hey, I'm going to quit. I'm, I'm not going because these guys can give me an extra $200. So instead of me making uh, right now, instead of me getting $450, uh, instead of me getting $250 to complete this call, I'm going to make $450. And I ain't going to make that uh, uh, working uh, eight hours at the job. Cool, cool. Uh, how long is the appliance repair class? It's a two-day class. Yeah, two days. It's not in Fayetteville, though. It's in Selma, North Carolina. Uh, shout out to the Venture Courier Service in South Jersey. Yeah, you guys, be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you haven't done so already. Comment where you're watching this from. Right now, we're just having an open forum. You guys can feel free uh, what you guys think about my perspective, Mike's perspective, your own perspective about anything. We're just going to run through the chat and then get out of here. Shout out to Tampa, Florida. Uh, man, JT, keep doing your thing, homie trying to save up for a couple of your classes. How do I get started without the class to make it to the class? Again, like we tell you how to make money for free in so yeah. many YouTube videos, right? right? Go back and look at them. Yeah. We gave you so much information. People have taken that information and ran with it, and yeah. they made money to come to this class. Yeah. I think I got almost 550 videos on this YouTube channel, and, and I've been doing it not quite two years yet, but let's just call it two years. So it's plenty of game. If you're just trying to make 850 or whatever it is to get out here, but you can make way more than that. Like it's people that reached out to me, they making two thousand dollars a week with a courier service and good, and just running with it, growing from there. Um, and, and people are well on their way to making six figures off of that stuff. Shout out to Orlando, Florida. Shout out to the Bay Area. Shout out to Buffalo. Uh, ready to come out and join the team. Chester from Atlanta. I'm going to watch the replay. Absolutely. Uh, how does the online class work? Uh, is it done with videos? Yes, it's done with video. How about the hands-on? Do we need to schedule a visit to NYC, the NC anyway? I'm in Cali. No, the online class is the same information except the hands-on, right? So we're not going to ship you no appliances, but it's the exact same information. <laughs> Again, it just depends on what kind of learner are you. A lot of people say they can't make it out to North Carolina or they don't want to come out to North Carolina. They wanted it offered online. So it's the exact same information online. As you get, uh, if you come to the hands-on training, but again, uh, if you come out to North Carolina, you can actually take apart appliances, put them back together, and, and get that hands-on. So it's really up to you guys. Which way do you learn learn best? If you're somebody that can just see it and replay the videos and go like that, uh, then you can learn from the comfort of your home. If you're somebody that says, "Hey, I really need to know how it feels to pick up a transmission, right, and, and then reinstall it, 
right? Then uh, then you need to come out to the live event if you can. Um, if that's how you learn. Shout out to Lewis Jr. in Nashville. Uh, I have got too old for the appliance repair, but I'll stick with the cell phone repair. Absolutely. Absolutely. That course is out. That live event is not this weekend, but next weekend uh, already, right? And then we uh, got another one at the end of September. Uh, cell phone repair course is on fire, worth every penny. Appreciate that, uh, Lewis Jr. Uh, so for anybody that wanted any testimonies about the online course, that's one for the cell phone repair. Appreciate that. Rodney Reader checking in from Detroit. Shout out to Nicole Noel from Los Angeles. Want to get into cell phone repair. Where's a good source to learn how to get the materials and fix phones? Again, the link to the online course will be down below. Do you all offer payment plans for the payments? No. How many days is the class? Is uh, two days for appliance boot camp. One day for the cell phone repair class. Shout out to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, this is the information I live for. Appreciate it, fellas. Duplicate and implement. Absolutely. How much is the online course? A thousand dollars for the online course for appliance boot camp. Currently, we're doing a sale for the cell phone repair course. Is at six fifty. Um, so much opportunity for this business in the Boston area. Shout out to Southern Wisconsin. Thanks for your help. Got people all over, man. Yeah. All over the U.S. Appreciate y'all being. Hit that like button. Uh, if you buy the online course, can you come to the live training after completing it? As an alumni student, right? As of right now, uh, we haven't decided if we're yeah. going to allow that to happen uh, now or, or, or not yet. So we actually got to think about it uh, because, again, the, the online course was was birthed out of people that said they could never make it out. Uh, so they wanted to have uh, access to the information without coming out as well. So, uh, like, we'll, we'll definitely be in yeah, touch. Yeah, we 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 when we yeah. go next year, when we, uh, we actually start to move to a bigger place and stuff, we're going to have to sit down and see how we can address that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you if you got to take it online and need to come out, yeah, maybe next year when we get in the bigger building, we can accommodate everybody. Yeah. Um, JT Hustle Time Academy. Appreciate that. A link to the Academy is there. Congrats on the 40K subscribers. Appreciate that. Hey, JT, what happened to the video where you guys was working on your car? Which one is that? I don't remember. <laughs> we got so many of them. Yeah, I don't know. What was we doing to the car? Yeah. Yeah, um, I would love to just spend a couple hours listening to the knowledge. I paid for a great channel. Appreciate that. Uh, my own business is super stressful, but incredibly rewarding. Mm -hmm. uh, over 80 in the chat, so hit the like button. Yeah, you guys, uh, YouTube does like it. If you hit the like button, it says that this is a good video, and they show it to more people. Um, Want to go to the boot camp, but literally can't afford it. What to do? Watch the free videos, right? Watch the free videos on this channel. Develop a side hustle. Uh, if it's something that you really want to do, save up your money and come out. But again, I, I'll be the first one to tell you guys, hey, um, it, it's worth more than the price of the course. But I do understand everybody don't have it. So watch the free videos, man. Get your hustle on. Create a side income. Get your money up. If at that point in time you want to come out, we would love to have it. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah. Uh, he said, go back for two weeks. Uh, for what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't give you two weeks notice. Oh, they talking about the guy that said yeah. two weeks notice. But again, no no disrespect to the gentleman or lady, right? Because I they don't have a profile image I can see. But I do understand not just that person. There's other people that feel the same way. Like, hey, uh, I need to give a two weeks notice. And again, um, if, if you want to and it's convenient, cool. If you struggling, like they gave Mike a two minute note, yeah. right? <laughs> Less than two minutes. Of the police <laughs> put handcuffs on. Yeah, so uh, they're not gonna give you two weeks' notice before they lay you off. So uh, don't don't give two weeks' notice before you fire them. Um, hey, new to the group, was wondering where you guys based out of. We in North Carolina. Uh, it's a two day class in Selma, North Carolina. Um, why do employees whom want to or say want to own their own business worry about PTO or benefits? You can save for a retirement plan in the IRA account with the proper use of cash flow. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And that's the other thing, too. Uh, you know, everybody talking about the retirement accounts and stuff. Back then, we had, like, the 401Ks and stuff. But I couldn't contribute to it because I didn't have enough. I needed, I needed every penny that they were paying me. I, didn't, I couldn't contribute to it properly. So it was underfunded. And as far as vacation time, uh, uh, every day is a vacation now. Uh, Look at JT now. We said come here in the middle of the day yeah. anytime and we work and do what we want to do. Yeah. I ain't got no set time to be nowhere. He don't have no set time to be anywhere. We just, uh, wherever we're working on, we just go do work. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's not something 
where I have to be somewhere. Even next week, I know I'm leaving for for pretty much a week and stuff. Uh, I don't have to ask nobody to get nobody no information. Yeah, just go. I literally was at Myrtle Beach yesterday buying fish. Yeah, there you go. Just do what you want. You pretty you much, yourself. pretty much. How old are you now? Is he 29? 29, just 29. 29. 29. And he, he's pretty much retired. He's retired at 29. I got out the rat race when I was at 29. But I'm about 31, 32. Uh, when I was able to get out the rat race, uh, I was able to get my wife out the rat race by the time she was about 30, 34, 35. So, at the, in my early thirties, I was I was done. I didn't I didn't have to go to uh, go to work and stuff anymore. I, I worked like I wanted to. Like now, I'm doing what I like to do. I like to come out here and do YouTube. I like to to put this school together. I, I, I'm doing what I want to do. Who who? Uh, Ricky man, giving you two weeks notice the day you intend to leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, Brian Brian uh, Gary. I think this is in regards to the lady that was talking about earlier uh -huh. subcontracting out the work. She means, can you obtain? The contract and let someone else basically do the work on a 1099. I'm assuming she means basically be the dispatcher. Oh yeah, sell selling leads and stuff. Yeah, you can do that, uh, but just know um, and when you start doing that, you're gonna be cutting. Uh, it, it, they don't the uh, third party warranty company already cut some meat off the bone. Then you get it, you gonna cut some meat off the bone. The further you start, uh, you throw that bone down the line, the less meat is on it, and uh, then you're gonna start getting people. Who just gonna be desperate for cash, and those people desperate for cash, they are not gonna do good work. Uh, yeah, I do. I do actually sub out a lot of my leads and stuff, but the leads and stuff I sub out is gonna be cash calls, gonna be paying good money. And uh, people who actually used to work for me, uh, they come out and they, uh, they what you call, they they do those sub. Uh, I, I sub out to them, and they make really good money doing that. Cool, cool. Um, Mike keeping it a hundred. Shout out to Maryland. Uh, what's going on? Uh, shout out to St. Louis, Missouri. JT also is a friend of mine is trying to persuade me from taking the boot camp class and drive trucks for a thousand dollars a load driving a cargo van. Uh, could you elaborate on this versus the courier business? Right. Honestly, right. I'll keep it a buck with you. You will make more money doing this than being a courier. Right. Um, and from the sense of now, can both of them make a hundred thousand dollars? Yes. But six figures is a hundred thousand and nine hundred thousand. Um, the overhead and uh, real quickly, then we'll move on overhead with this business, in my opinion, is less because you can use a personal vehicle, a bag of tools from Harbor Freight and you can go right with a courier service. You, you're going to start off with cargo vans because they're the most cost effective. Get the bang for your buck out there. And then if you really want to start making uh, crazy money, you're going to invest in either more cargo vans and eventually box trucks of some sort. Whereas if you want to turn it up. Uh, in this business, you could just start taking more calls, right? And still use that same bag of tools and that same vehicle you started with however long ago. And if you decide at some point in time, you want to train somebody uh, on how to do this and let them do some work so you can do less work, you know what I mean? So I think that, um, honestly, I love the independent courier business. It was my bridge uh, to take a 24-year-old guy that was scared and in corporate America, but hating his job, working 14-hour days. Uh, out of that life in Maryland to being a full-time entrepreneur over five years ago now. But if you're just talking about uh, getting into it and hustling and making the most money, I'll be the first one to tell you you'll make more money uh, fixing appliances than uh, than being an independent courier, right? Um, so if you're talking about truck drivers, and maybe, but truck drivers spend a lot of money as well. I know somebody that owns their own truck and trailer. They make over two hundred and seventy thousand dollars a year. They spend almost a hundred grand a year in just insurances and maintaining the truck, right? So, yeah. Uh, I, I, uh, and like I say, I don't know much about the truck and uh, truck drivers, but I can say from what I've um, been told, because I, I've I've had maybe 10, 15 people who actually drive long distance trucks. Who actually wants to come to the appliance boot camp and actually um, get into the appliance repair field? And they've been doing it for years. Um, they always tell me they're just tired of being on the road. Uh, here, like they, they like the freedom of being able to go home every day and not stuck out on the road for a week or three or four days. Here, uh, like I say, uh, our first stop is at ten o'clock. Our last stop is at three o'clock. And uh, I, with me, I can just drive not even a mile or mile from my house. Uh, and I can, I can do all the calls I want to do and never have to cross over a major highway or anything. So Ooh, so you can make six figures in your neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, my, and my, I, I, two communities, uh, just two communities. I'm in a small community. I can just go to two communities back and forth 
and uh and make uh make over six figures. Shout out to Columbus, Ohio in the chat. Do I need a truck to do this? Just joining in, how much is the course? And are you any closer to an online course? Sorry for all the typos. Nah, it's all good. Um, so let's break it down. Do you need a truck to do this? No, you can use whatever vehicle you have. Uh, how much is the course? Appliance boot camp is a thousand dollars. Are you any closer to an online course? Online course is done for everything, yeah. right? The cell phone repair and the uh Appliance Bootcamp, they're done, but as we add stuff and go into bigger buildings, I'll still be adding whatever we add. Uh, so for those online alumni that can't make it out, they still uh, get whatever people that come live get. So uh, both the courses are done. Uh, link is somewhere in the chat now, but I'll also make sure it's down in the description below. Courses are done. Don't need a truck to do it. And I think I think that was it. Uh, with the price, $1,000 for Appliance Bootcamp. Uh, cell phone repair is on sale right now. For uh six fifty, um, what's up at my corporation nine to five watching? Uh, this loud. Thank you both. <laughs> Shout out to Wilmington, North Carolina. Congrats on forty k. Uh, JT, appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate uh all eighty people that's here. If you didn't hit that thumbs up button, please do it and, and know that you know this is you guys' channel, right? If nobody tuned in and hit subscribe. <laughs> Uh, we wouldn't even be able to, to reach as many people as we do and change as many lives as we have, whether it be from the free videos, uh, the books that's mm -hmm. on Amazon or the live events. Right. So um, you guys are just as important to this as we are by uh, watching the videos, hitting that thumbs up button, letting YouTube know that this kind of content uh, should be shared with more people. And if you try to, uh, and if you choose rather to share this on your Facebook or any other social media, um, so thank you guys as well. Thank you for 40K because it wouldn't uh, be anything without you guys. Um, let me see. Shout out to Macon, Georgia. Uh, Mike and JT, uh, much love to you guys for priceless knowledge. Uh, from Jarvis Page. Shout out to Jarvis Page, man, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Sear Culture is the clothing brand, up and coming clothing brand. Very dope. Um, if you see this, Jarvis, put the link in the chat. But Jarvis Page is a really dope clothing brand designer. Uh, it's called Sear Culture in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. You guys got to check him up because his, his stuff actually have a story behind it, right? Unlike uh, a lot of other things that's out there. Uh, Mike, you are correct. As far as business expenses, I owed the IRS working for my employer. <laughs> and when I added my business expenses, now the IRS owes me a tax refund. Yeah. Right? I, I personally know somebody who owns a business. I ain't going to say their name. Yeah. But they... <laughs> They uh they they made over uh, uh six figures for many years, and they actually got refunds back every year. They, yeah. they never paid, never paid a penny in taxes. Uh, yeah. And that's something else I want to <laughs> I want to uh, point out too. Uh, in case anybody has this question, because I get it a lot too. Uh, people always want to know, like, okay, what's your net worth? And I'm trying to get people to understand uh, that yeah. they're like, really, like, you don't want to have a high network because now if you say, hey. I make this much money a month, like then Uncle Sam is going to say, okay, you made that much money a month, and now you got other problems, other not only taxes, though, uh, you're going to have family members <laughs> going to love you, you're going to have some new friends, right? So when uh, this is just advice to any new or aspiring entrepreneur, right? And I know it may be hard if you've never made this kind of money before. Man, just because you're making money, it don't matter what your net worth is. You can tell people my net worth is zero, right? I don't, I don't have no money. My tax returns say I lost money, right? Because yeah, it, it just causes problems. I don't, I don't think anybody needs to know your net worth <laughs> or how much money you have. And it may feel good telling people, "Oh, I made ten thousand dollars, twenty thousand dollars, or whatever this month," right? But it just causes problems. In my experience, it just causes problems. Yeah, uh, I, 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 somebody asked me that one time uh, in one of the live streams. Uh, was I a millionaire? And I, I said, no, nah, I, don't, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm, I'm thinking you know, a cash liquid millionaire. No, nah, I'm not no no cash liquid millionaire and stuff. And then I maybe just start adding up my assets and stuff. I, I don't know. Maybe it might be close if I add up my all my assets and stuff. But I, I can tell you, uh, people who you uh, who supposedly have these high net worth and all this and that, uh, when uh, I thought they had those high net worths and stuff. And we were getting ready to do deals, and we got ready to go good, do deals. I found out they ain't have no cash. I'm <laughs> like, man, you got no cash. <laughs> they were yeah. like, nah, we got no cash. And the people that I never thought had any cash, they were the ones who had the cash. But uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah, the people that you see out, and, and you, I, 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 I tell you, those those house flippers that was driving those Lexus and 
and those escalades and all that uh, 10, 15 years ago, uh, I thought they had money. And come to find out, uh, as soon as the market tank, man, they owed me money left and right. They didn't have no money. They uh, uh, And then, then I found out that when they were flipping, they weren't really flipping with their money. They were flipping with other people. They were flipping other people's property. Uh, they, they didn't have no cash in the game to the point when uh, we got ready to go do some deals and stuff together. They didn't have no cash. So, <laughs> Yeah, so just a little word to the wise to all you new entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, right? It's all about freedom, right? So net worth is going to cause problems. You can, <laughs> you can think I'm lying and you can go out and you can start making uh, this money or more and tell everybody in your family how much money you're making and see how many people got problems that only you can solve, <laughs> right? So uh, it's freedom is what it's all about at the end of the day. So uh, just, just getting... So whatever your freedom number is, as they call it. Yeah, that, that's that's the way I used to think. I used to tell people uh, I was gonna be a millionaire. I used to tell my family and them that I'm gonna be a millionaire. Not that I get to make a million dollars to be wealthy, but then I realized at that point in time, I think it was maybe about thirty six hundred dollars that what I needed to generate per month, but uh, to actually not have to work anymore. And once I generated that thirty six hundred dollars at that time, uh, I was I was pretty I was out. <laughs> I was I was out. And uh, that's all I needed. It was just, uh, just to generate a certain amount of money to cover my monthly, uh, have enough cash flow coming in to cover my my little monthly uh, bills and stuff. After I got that amount, I didn't have to work anymore. And I, I, I was I was rich then. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't rich. I was wealthy. I was wealthy. Cause that, that's another thing I tell people. Uh, like like when people come in, they they say that about uh about uh about their jobs and this and that. Their jobs do this and they do that. I said, okay, fine. Let's go underwater. And I say, go underwater. Hey, let's you and I go somewhere for, for, for two or three months and you don't go to clock in at your job and see how long you can stay out there with me. Don't do anything. <laughs> and we, we see who can keep hold their breath the longer. We can see how much that job means. You know, mm -hmm. uh, I, we can go wherever and I, I, I can stay there and be okay. So. Cool, cool. Was it appliances? Yes. Yeah. JT, love your videos, bro. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate it. Is this cell phone repair class finished? It's finished. As far when I say finish, everything for this folks to go, uh, excuse me, first go round is in there. So uh data recovery, fixing screens, contracts, all of the stuff we told you was gonna be in there, that's done. But um, if you don't know, I'm gonna continue. Like let's say we come to the first class, we knock it out the water, but somebody says, I don't know, right? And and we say, okay, that's a good point. Let's teach that in this live event as well. I, that will also be added in the course as well. So it is complete, but I want you guys to know from now to the end of the year, if, as we get better at this and we add information, uh, you're not going to be shortchanged on the online course. Uh, you're going to get all the updates. You don't got to repay for the course again. You just log back in and it'll still be there. And you'll just say, okay, we added like today, we're going to work on adding installs, right? So, um, but the courses are done. But they will be updated uh, up through the end of the year. Sub so guys, have y'all heard of a subject called Bachelor's in Science in Business Administration? <laughs> and how or can it tie into what you guys are discussing? You you don't need it. Like, <laughs> you don't need. And this is again like just to put in that perspective, assuming that you don't know me, I don't know you. Um, I have a, a master's degree. <laughs> don't need it. My. Uh, my master's degree is, a, is public administration, though, not business. My best friend has a master's in business administration. The, the kind of work that he does has nothing to do with uh, a business degree. You Honestly, if you want to get a business degree, it really teaches you how to work for somebody in business, right? So my daughter's one year old. I'm raising her up to be an entrepreneur. The people that she hires will probably have that degree, but it, it doesn't really help you as far as like being an entrepreneur doing your own stuff, right? And, and me personally, if I can help it, my daughter won't even go to college. Like, I'll just teach her, hey, this is how you make a lot of money. This is what I have. You can have it. And so as far as college, again, if, if you want to go to college, like uh, I, I know a young lady that's uh, really young and on track to becoming a doctor, and she's already about to start med school. I think she's like 23 years old, about to start med school already, always being, you know, above average intellectually. So if you're going to school to help people and be a doctor and a lawyer or something like that, then cool. If you're going to college to make more money, um, I think that's part of the rat race that uh, that we were told to do. Our parents were told to do. Our grandparents were told to do. So it's not that they were trying to mislead you. That's just all that they knew. But once you get out of that, you'll see like, hey, I got a bachelor's degree. I owe uh, the, the student loan people 20, 30, 40,000 or more dollars. And I can barely find a job that's going to pay me 30000 a year. 
right? So um, again, if you go into college for, you know, I want to help people and, and I'm going to be uh, cured cancer or something like that, then cool. But uh, if, if you're saying I'm going to college to get a good paying job, as somebody that, that has spent, I think, like seven years, because I got my associate's, bachelor's, and master's, I think I spent about seven years in college getting that, don't need it. Not if it goes to make money. Anything you got to say about college. Yeah, Mike went to college as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, you, if you're doing anything in the business school, if you're not doing accounting, don't even waste your time. <laughs> You'd be better off just learning how to do QuickBooks and write a sales spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. uh, nah, they, uh, you ain't going to learn anything in business administration. You're going to be somebody's secretary. So just uh, you better off just learning how to answer the phone and do uh, QuickBooks and stuff. Uh, yeah, because most of the time, the people who teach in the, uh, in the university, they never started no business. They don't know how to start no business. You'd be better off just tuning in and watching JT and myself. You actually get the, right here, this applies boot camp. That's that right there is uh, if you wanted an MBA or uh, how to start a business, you saw it right here in front of you. You saw us start from just an idea in our mind, and you saw how we actually we didn't go out and take no loans and stuff out. We actually got a product that we could market to, take it to the marketplace. We marketed it. Once we got it in, we proved the concept a little bit. We improved upon it. We took some of the money off the top, reinvested the earnings, and we made it a little better. We're going to take some more money off the top, reinvest it. And you've seen the business come together, and you've seen it being transformed. Uh, so this, 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 is, this is how business work. This, this is what business look like. Uh, everybody see the end result. Now, and later on, if you catch us uh, a year from now, it's going to look very, very different from this. We have a lot, a lot more stuff going on, and that, that's the type. That's the time when everybody want to see it. Then they say, "Man, look what you've done!" Uh, uh, and everybody wants to do that. They want to go out and borrow money and get to where we're at while putting in all this hard work. This is what business looks like when it's coming together. When we're actually trying to prove the concept and we're actually uh, building it, building it as we go. And we haven't taken a a, a, a a dime loan out to do any of this. All this just came right from out of our mind. Uh, did you ask permission for anybody? <laughs> I didn't ask permission. <laughs> did we go to the state and get a license? Nah, we get a certification. No, uh, that's one thing. Uh, uh, people say you have to, uh, you gotta have a license to teach, and you gotta have, a, you gotta have a uh, be certified to teach. Uh, I don't think nobody ever came here and asked me if I uh, got a license to teach or anything. <laughs> they, uh, we, we, it, it's good. Nobody complaining about it. So uh, yeah. this, 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 you want to do business. Do business. Yeah, it, we just people that are really doing it. Yeah, people that really because lots of times you'll get under a professor who maybe they've done it, but lots of times they haven't ever done it. They, they never done. They it. researched <laughs> how to do it and they telling you what they researched. Yeah, but they, you come they, here, it's people it. that's really doing. It. Yeah, um, Lewis Junior uh, is all signed up. All right, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Can Mike provide his contact information? Uh, once you come to the class, I will. Uh, I, one time I used to do that, but we're at the point now uh, where JT got forty thousand subscribers. I got 2,000 subscribers. We have people coming all the time to the, uh, to the live events and stuff. And just think, I still run other businesses too. And I get phone calls nonstop. And if I put my information out there, my whole day will be consistent of people calling. And a lot of people call and uh, just want to talk to us. Like we're talking now, a lot of people call and just want to talk. And uh, so I can only, I have to keep the lines in myself and my time free for those people who actually came to the boot camp who's actually out there doing service calls and they need help. So um, I don't have time to just get my number out like that. Unless you need to come to the boot camp, yeah, you can get my number where you can reach me. Cool. JT, you have good content, but we sometimes need step-by-step -step process <laughs> for these others. Uh, all right, you might be new to the channel, but we got videos on this channel that give you step-by-step -step how to create several businesses from start to finish, like businesses you can start. I think we might deal with $40, $60. Oh, God. No yeah, damn. so it's... And uh, uh, if, if Mike wants to, we might can start back up that series once we uh, get everything around here kind of like stable. Um, and when we can we can start it back up, right? Mm -hmm. But definitely, it's, it's I don't know how many videos on this channel will tell you different businesses you can start, how much money you need to start them, uh, courier business, online business. Um, we did the, uh, the the furniture repair, the cell phone repair, driving dry cleaning. cleaning. Um, I can't even think of them all. Hot right? dog cart. Yeah, the <laughs> hot dog <laughs> cart. <laughs> Newsletter. Yep. Uh, uh, it's too community many. Community. Uh, every time we 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 start off a hundred dollars. That won't good enough. I ain't got for fifty dollars. We're gonna five <laughs> more for fifty. I need one just for women. We five more for women. It, yeah. So we we we, not, we got a, he got a array of stuff on yeah. there that we've done. Yeah. So. And I might start organizing stuff in the playlist. I think that'll that'll be easier for anybody that's new uh, and just tell you you know go to this playlist 
if you're somebody that's new and, and don't know that that already exists. So we can go ahead and say, okay, this is the playlist for you to get all these step by step things. So I'll work on that and uh, and, and get that uh, squared away. Um, let me see. Um, hey guys from DC trying to follow along. Appreciate you being here. Are you still sitting on that vacant lot? If so, you should put some tiny homes on the lot and rent them out or Airbnb them, right? I still am. Um, I'm dealing with the surveyor right now. She's trying to give me some runaround about um, how she's having trouble trying to find out where the property line starts and stops. And I don't know. It's, it's, it should be a non-issue, but um, I definitely got to reach out to her again. So uh, we're just trying to make sure we get a survey so I know definitively if I want to put a paintball field here, where do I need to put my fence or a house or whatever it is? So, yeah, I'm still just sitting on it now uh, in the sense that I'm trying to, you know, legally find out where are my boundaries and then what can I do uh, within these boundaries. Um, and, and you got to deal with the city because uh, if you saw those videos, it's, it's uh, like a little country area, real quiet, older people got cows and farms. So uh, if, if we do a business out there and it's going to bring traffic and noise. Uh, I, I'm probably gonna have to talk to the city, uh, Lithonia, Georgia, Tampa, Florida. Great info. See you in September. Uh, what about the guy that worked on your car? The one where you can make yeah, 50. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. That's when I was locked out. So, okay. So that's what they talking about. The locksmith business and yeah. stuff like that. So again, just out of respect for the family, family reached out to me on Instagram. They said, Hey, you know, and, and long story short, would I take the video down? And, uh, and I just said, okay, I took the video down. So just out of respect for the family, they came to me, expressed the concern they had. At the end of the day, I'm not trying to maliciously do anything to hurt anybody. This is all about motivating people, inspiring people to do something entrepreneurial and also educate them on different businesses as well. So if, if we ever have somebody on the channel and then a family member thinks that that's going to hurt their family business and that's their primary source of income, I don't want anybody to feel like, you know, JT, uh, is trying to starve my family or put my family in the poorhouse, anything like that. So just out of respect, we took it down. Uh, to Rico Logistics Business, uh, okay, like your keys in the car. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. You can flip appliances, make the money to attend the course, or have someone sponsor you for the boot camp class. It's a tax write-off. Yes, it is tax. Once you start your business, uh, you come into the boot camp as education, and it's, it's, it's a write-off. So you, you can write that off for your taxes. Cool, cool, man. JT, you got me about to dissolve the all natural skincare and shift gears to join ABC. Man, you can do both. Yeah. You can do both. If you're watching this channel, you know I do a lot. So, man, I do fish breeding. I do this. I sell stuff online. I write books, right? Uh, I'm trying to open up a daycare for my daughter, right? So, I, I do I do a lot, man. Um, and, and you can too. You can have as many income streams as you want. Um, just, just put a team together and go. Uh, anybody that comes to the live events will know that, you know, I'm sitting in the back telling jokes and Mike, is, <laughs> Mike holds it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have a washing machine and dryer sitting in my backyard, still functioning. Any advice on what I can do about it? You can put it on Craigslist and, and yeah. sell it. And yeah, make sure make sure it's still working and make sure you got no snakes or no walls or nothing in there now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just flip it. Um, Eastern Transport, sell it. Uh, may not be clean. Okay, I think they're talking to each other. Yeah. Let me skip around. Uh, when you take third-party warranty calls, um, how often do these companies pay you? Is it every thirty days? <laughs> nah, nah. Uh, it used to be. Uh, they used to be five within five business days. Five to seven business days they would pay you. So if you uh if you went out anything out of you if we went out this week from Monday through Friday. If you put all your calls in, you will get paid to follow. You get paid the following Friday uh, if you put it in before Sunday. But uh, I didn't know that, so I, I always was just doing my billing um, on the end of the week on Sunday afternoons. I'll do all my billing. But then the guys that came to appliance boot camp, they started telling me, "No, they're getting paid within two and three days." So I said, "You are?" And said, "Yeah." So I looked. They changed it. I didn't know it because I had been stuck for all these years doing uh, five to seven days. That you, if you bill, if you bill out. They pay you within three days. Uh, so um, now, if you, now I started billing out every day. So now that I bill out every day, I get a paycheck every. I get I get deposits into my account every day, uh, and that's really good now because now you know you you was getting one lump sum all the time. Now every morning you wake up, you know, just think every morning if, if you were somebody who was doing this every morning you wake up, uh, you woke up before you uh. 
before you Westbrook off, before you uh, went to work. To so 375 375 to $500 every day. And coming into your account every day. And that's what these guys are saying. They, when they wake up in the morning, they say anywhere between two fifty to five hundred dollars getting deposited into their account before they go. You know, as five usually the deposits come through about five thirty in the morning, so they go up and check their account. They got two hundred fifty dollars. They got five hundred dollars in their account before they even go to work. And you look at that. Yeah, it does make it hard for you to go back to work. <laughs> say, man, I, I'm getting paid every day, and versus if I go to work, it's gonna take me two weeks and all that. Uh, nah, there ain't no. And that's another thing too. There ain't no working a week in the hole <laughs> when you do this. When you go do it, as soon as you as soon as you bill out, you getting your money. Ain't no week in the hole. Cool, cool. Uh, thank you for putting all of us up on game. Much appreciated, Mike and JT. You welcome. You welcome. Thank y'all for tuning in. We got eighty three people still rocking with us. Wow. Almost an hour and forty five minutes yeah. later. Uh, if you haven't done so already, hit that thumbs up button. We just talking to you guys until you guys don't want to talk no more. Yeah. Honestly, so uh, put your comments, anything in the chat, and then we're gonna get out of here. Um. Let me see. At JT also, do you have a course to design shoes? No, it's free YouTube videos I made about that. Also, Gerard, shout out to Gerard if he's still in the chat. His son, um, we sat in the back and uh, he designed his own sneakers and he got his own sneakers out now too. Company I use called Alive Shoes. Alive, like the opposite of dead. Alive and then shoes, right? And it's uh, real straightforward. Uh, put in the application, it's absolutely free. Design your shoes. I tell everybody, now, I don't mind telling you the company or anything on this channel. Uh, you guys know that. But it's not one of those companies that you're going to make a lot of money with. They're going to tell you how much the shoes are, and they're going to tell you how much they're going to pay you. And it's pretty much you say deal or no deal. So they might say, uh, based off of the Italian leather and everything you want, it's $190 for these shoes. We'll give you $30 for every pair that you sell. Uh, we do all the, the, the customer service, the manufacturing, the website stuff. You do all the marketing, yes or no, right? So, and that's just the company that I use because I'm not really into like selling shoes to make enough money to feed myself and my daughter, right? It's just something that all my shoes have a story behind them, very inspirational. If you're interested in the shoes, uh, you guys seen the videos I do at my house. I got a couple pair of shoes. I'm a shoe person, and you know what I mean? And I'm guaranteeing that the stock going to rise on those shoes. So if it interests you, support it. If not, you know what I mean? I understand. Uh, hi, fellas. I'm in Arlington, Texas. I enjoy your videos. Is there an opportunity here in my area? You can fix appliances everywhere. You can fix cell phones everywhere. You can do a courier service everywhere. So it's like, man, it depends on what you want to do. But yeah, yeah it's a uh, like I said, we had somebody come from Ethiopia to this very last class, and uh, and you guys have met him if you've seen that video already. So it just it depends on what you want to do. But there's opportunities in in every area. Uh. I don't see the link to your website in the description box. Please don't forget to post it at the end of the session. Yeah, absolutely. After this live stream, so if you're watching this after the fact, it's in the description right now. Is If you're in the live chat, scroll all the way up to the top of the chat, and that's where the link is now. Uh, after we finish talking to you guys, I'm going to add it uh, to the description, right? So that's what it'll be. I got 100 likes. Appreciate them likes, man. Yeah. Uh, shout out to all 90 people that's still tuning in to watch me and Mike ramble, man. But uh Anything you guys want to talk about, you know, we're going to chop it up with you for a while. Um, but, yeah, for sure. Thanks for the reminder. We'll definitely uh, make sure that's, that that is there. Excellent content, guys. Man, I got to catch the ABC as well. Cell phone business may not be enough to satisfy the entrepreneur fire. Uh, you helping me fuel. Absolutely, you guys. I'm all about multiple uh, streams of income. Um, Mike, are you able to see how many people registered so far for the um, October class or not yet? Yeah, I can. I can, I can. I, but so we, for our, uh, the one that we currently yeah the opened. one we just opened because yeah. you guys know this sell out fast so we gonna uh we gonna see if anybody already registered and we just doing first come first serve um let me see hey you guys do you have a class that may help a person like me yeah we got that's starting people, a business in three healthcare. people registered already all right so we we got seven spots left in the class so far you guys already got three people registered uh while we was live so if you want to get into that one it's October the fifth. You come out. It's the last one of the year. Uh, we already sold out for Well, the one in August is already. We just did this past weekend. September is sold out. October is sold out one time already. So this is the second one in October. And November is already sold out as well. Uh, so this is the last one of the year if you want to come out. Um, hey, you guys, we have a class that may help a person like me that's starting a business in healthcare. Currently, I don't. I do know a lady. That, that is like a nurse and goes around, uh, but uh, it's, it's more so she had to go to school and get 
certified and stuff like that. So I may have her on the channel one day. Um, I will tell you that if so, it's not like a business you could just pick up and go do one day. Uh, there is like some formal training that the state is going to require you have before you start doing healthcare. But um, it really just depends, I guess, what you're going to do in healthcare. Cause uh, uh, my, my older brother's best friend uh, had a business in Atlanta where he just fixed dialysis machines and made a killing, uh, made a killing until he settled down. Um, hey guys, I remember in a previous video, Sneed mentioned union states for the, for this business. How do I find out if Ohio is a union state? So I know this business will really benefit me. Uh, this business doesn't require you to have a license or anything. So uh, the unions don't bother you. And I say union states, um, that's the meaning when people, people are always talk about they want to get certifications and, uh, and whatnot. And I say a lot of that stuff came from just blocking out, especially African-Americans. Uh, that's where the unions came from. The unions came in to keep African-Americans from being in the skilled trades. Because uh, prior after slavery ended, we were all the skilled tradesmen. No, we built the South and we built most of the uh, United States uh, because we were the slaves and we we're the labor force. So we had all the skilled trades. And even coming from Africa, you know, we created brick mason, the brick mason, the brick making process. So all that stuff we brought here. And when slavery ended, a lot of people started moving up north and they started moving up north. The slaves did. They were going into business in the skilled trades. They were blacksmith, carpenters brick masons and all that stuff, machinists. And what happened, they were putting the white people out, uh, the white people who were already in the North, they were putting them out of work. And to make sure that they couldn't keep putting them out of work and keep moving ahead, they, they started the unions. They said in order for you to be uh, a blacksmith, you had to belong to the union. And then they would say African-Americans could not belong in the union. So then they started importing other immigrants in like the Irish and the Italian and stuff to go with those jobs. And they pushed the African-American slaves back out. Um, also, if you start to look in, in, into the uh, into the uh, appliances, you'll find out that most of the African-Americans, uh, the men, African-American men created the refrigerator, the refrigerator, the refrigerator was created by African-American man. Uh, the range <laughs> was cre created by African-American man. Most of the appliances that you see were created by African-American men. So this is a trade that's made for African-American men because we created it. So we created most of the appliances that's in your houses. Cool, cool. BK from the Rocky says, completely agree. I have multiple degrees and it was hell finding a job after school because I was over and underqualified <laughs> for jobs, really. Yeah, yeah I got several yeah. family members that's going through that right now. Yeah, uh, Real Gamer says, real talk, my professor in college told me he went broke multiple times and is still in debt. He's an old man. <laughs> Absolutely. Do the warranty company supply the parts needed for repairs? Yeah, the warranty company. When you sign your contract with the warranty company, they'll do it uh, two ways. They'll do it where you can add, they'll actually supply the parts and you just supply the labor. That's the way I tell you to do it. Or they'll do it where you supply the parts and they give you like a 20% markup on your parts. Um, I tell you, don't do it that way. People who are established like to do it that way because they make they make twenty percent on the part sale. But if you don't have the cash flow, uh, you just have to think if they're sending you uh, three to four calls every day, and um, you got to replace control boards. Control boards can be um, anywhere between two to four hundred dollars. So if you're getting one of those every day. You got to come out your pocket two to four hundred dollars before you can get your money back. And cash flow is the name of the game. It's gonna kill your cash flow. Uh, so I say don't supply the parts. Let the warranty company supply the parts. Cool, cool. Um, Mike, once you show us about seal system repair, we'll be certified by you or still have to go to our state to certify for seal uh, system. No, nah, you got to go to EPA. EPA certified. Uh, no, nah, I'm going to show you how to repair it, but then you have to take a, a, a test on the EPA uh, website. And then once you take that test, they'll give you a certification so you can actually go out and purchase Freon and recover Freon. Mm -hmm. Uh, what happened with you in the ten thousand dollar house? Um, I definitely was looking at a ten thousand dollar house. Went and looked at it actually uh day before yesterday, I think. And um, yeah, it had to be the day before yesterday. It was in a flood zone, and uh, I was not interested. The people dropped the price from ten thousand to five thousand. Um, once I found that out, because I, you know, sometimes people don't want to tell you everything about the property. So um, I'm I'm really thinking about just just passing on it all together. But yeah, went to the house. Uh, it's in a flood zone. It had flood damage and it's been repaired, um, but it's still low. So if it ever floods again, right? So I got to I gotta really debate on even at $5,000, do I want to do whatever renovation costs 
to make it up uh, up high enough where flooding won't be an issue. And uh, I don't know if I want to take on that headache um, as a project right now. Um, who do have to register your appliance repair company with to get jobs? Third party warranty companies. Yeah. Uh, thanks, brothers. Portland, Oregon. Uh, JT, I live in Cali. And myself and a business partner are interested in the appliance course. Can we hire outside techs to do the work? Uh, we both work full time and we are ladies, but love the concept. Uh, yeah, and Mike touched on it briefly earlier that um, if, if you're talking about doing it with third party companies, um, you know, it'll be kind of hard because you already doing it at a discounted rate, which is this is the discounted rate yeah. for anybody that thinks that, you know, what I mean, oh, I'm gonna be making less than this. This is the discounted rate. So cash on delivery. Once you get your own cash customer, you'll make more than that. So uh, if, if you're going to take something off of it and they have to give them something. You know what I mean? Mike touched on the the, the problems that can occur from that. Um, yeah. Anything you want to add? Yeah. Also, um, the way I'm teaching the course, I'm teaching the course as uh, as almost I'm teaching the course from a self employment per uh, uh, to be self employed, uh, not as being an actual business owner. Uh, those would be totally two different uh, totally two different uh, courses I would have to teach. Uh, I'm teaching it from mainly for that person. Who wants to get out and wants to uh, don't don't really they want to just keep it simple. They they don't want employees. They want to go out and make them five to eight hundred dollars a day. They want to uh, they 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 want to have a, a pretty much simple life. They're not looking to go out here and grow and have a bunch of technicians and stuff. Um, I always tell them they come here, they get the concept down, and then if they want to grow their company and become an actual business owner, where you actually are controlling, uh, uh, we actually have technicians going out there doing the work, and you actually running the business, then you're going to need to join our association uh, called USA, United Services of America. You need to join that and come to our national seminars and get put into a peer group with other business owners, where we actually then can actually show you the business side of it. Business side of it and what I'm teaching is is night and day. The business side of it, you're not coming in here and you run you learn how to repair appliances because you're not gonna be repairing appliances if you are a, a business owner. You're gonna be hiring technicians and you can be writing processes and procedures, and that's what we'll be teaching you there. Uh, you'll be looking at actual uh, costs, like we're showing how you actually uh, can actually uh, add different uh, different prices and different percentages and to your uh, uh, to your cost calls per calls and stuff to actually get money and stuff you want. That's what you'll be looking at. You won't be looking at any, you won't be coming here. You, uh, you in the business side, you care less how, uh, how to put a refrigerator in, in, in the self diagnostic mode. Cause you're not going to be doing that. You're going to be having technicians doing that. You're going to be uh, actually learning how to actually run a business. Uh, so that the appliance boot camp wouldn't be good for that. Cool. cool. Uh, can y'all tell us about the online ABC class? Uh, how similar is it? Can't travel right now. Thank you. So it's the exact same information, except if you come here, it's hands on. You can take a part. Let me show you guys real quick. So if you come here, these are the appliances, right? So you will take all of these apart and learn dryer vent cleaning over there and all of that stuff, right? So you can actually come here and do it on these appliances hands on but as far as the information goes is the exact same information so uh it's really designed for uh initially people said they can't make it out to north carolina will we offer something online so exact same information if you're somebody that that learns uh find through an online class then you know it's the exact same information if you're somebody who uh needs to actually come out and physically touch an appliance here uh, then you're welcome to come out. So the exact same information. It just really depends on what kind of learner are you. Can you watch the video and go? Or do you need to come out here and take these apart? Um, or take the ones at your house apart uh, and, and then go. Um, Mike and Jay did to advertise my business. Magnet on my vehicle while still working for an employer. I already have my signage made already. What you think, Mike? Uh, yeah. I think yes. Yeah, I think yeah. They, what they gonna do? Uh, they they're gonna tell you they're gonna fire you because you uh, you not you not in competition. If you're now if you're an employer, if you was working for another appliance repair company, yeah, he don't want you uh, advertising your business when you are going out to in front of his customers. But if they ain't got nothing to do with appliance repair, why would they care? Mm -hmm. 
uh, good Lord. Uh, that's funny. Uh, people ask that question. But then I see people riding around with M&Ms and Cheerios, you know, logos and stuff all on their cars, and nobody even cares about those. Cool. Um, Veracity Cash, Mike, could you also advise the audience uh, that some warranty companies do require background checks and driving checks for a fee? Uh, the people that we had come through, the alumni, yeah, yeah and ran into that. Yeah, issue. depending on which one you're going to, um, some somebody might do that. But if they do, there's 20 more that don't. So uh, if, if somebody's gonna be pushing all that, just go to one who doesn't. Cool. Uh, I guess this is one of the students that uh, came. Yeah. Uh, if, uh, if if you can just email me at uh, uh, at uh, appliancebootcampnc at gmail dot com. And uh, I, I send you that. You must not have put your name. You must not have put your name on the actual list. I told everybody sign their name and email on the list for the tool list when you was here the other day. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if this is from the previous class. It might might have been from an older class. Nah, that that's uh, okay. Miss Adams that was here. Okay. Yeah, she uh, uh she well, I sent out the tool list, but I told everybody put their name on that email uh, sheet, and I was sending it out. So everybody name was that email sheet. Got it. And that's Cheryl, you guys, for those yeah. people that said they wanted to uh, hear a female that came through the class. She was in a couple of videos. Maybe uh, if she has a chance to come back up this way, we'll do a full video. But it, again, it's going to be completely up to her uh, if she feels comfortable doing it or not. Um, how long does it take to learn how to fix the appliances if I've never done it? We got people that's leaving here after a weekend and, and doing it. Yeah. Right. Uh, hey, Mike and JT, what? Uh, what do you have for the women? Same thing. <laughs> yeah. We got the uh well you yeah, we have women that come to this. We did the mobile uh ah oh, man, now I can't think about it. Just had to tell my dog tongue. grooming. Yeah, the mobile dog grooming. Uh the lady right next door is a female yeah, yeah, and she uh, we did her business. Um the mobile, what what is that furniture repair right. or upholstery business? Yeah, man, it's a lot. I'm gonna have to make a playlist. <laughs> uh yeah, because off the top of my head, man, it's, it's so many videos to remember yeah. every one of them. On um, what we had specific for women, uh, Mike, do you show us how to create or get a website for appliance repair business in your class? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, like I say, I'm telling you, go to the third party warranty company. And the reason I tell you go there, I want you to be focused on getting the technical part down pat uh, before you go into the business side. When you go, to, when you start dealing with the websites and stuff like that, that's going to be the business side. With the business side, then you you're gonna need to actually start coming to our um, coming to our national convention and actually then having the business side talk to you. Right now, I just want you to worry about getting the technical side down, so you not you not having to worry about marketing and getting customers. Uh, the third party warranty company is your customer, and they will tell you that the people houses you go to is their customers. So they're gonna send you all your work and stuff right now. And you all you need to worry about is just getting the technical side down. Once you get the technical side down, then you're uh, then ready to go out to the actual uh, general public and actually get what we call COD, cash on delivery calls. Then you need to then start worrying about doing the websites and learning how to market and all that stuff. But right now, just focus on the uh, technical side. Cool. Uh, last question I see is how much about – it costs to obtain the required insurance to work with the warranty companies. Um, Trinayan, I apologize if I mm -hmm. pronounced that wrong, but have a Hispanic last name. Uh, that's going to depend on several different factors. What warranty company you're going with, they, some of them have different limits. Uh, the state that you're in, the city that you're in, they require some things different. Some of them depend on uh, some war uh, insurance thing, depend on your credit score, depend on uh, the time, the amount of time you've been in business. It just, it just varies. Uh, it varies too much, too many variances for me to tell you. Cool, cool. And I think that was the last question. What's up, my people? The Neighborhood Magazine for the Women. Okay, so, yeah, I yeah, forgot so, about that. Yeah, so there we have it, you guys. So appreciate everybody that tuned in with us this long. Uh, share this with anybody you think you can help. And until next time, to all my hustlers, stay hustling. JTLs, any last words? Mike? Nah, we're good. <laughs> we're going to talk to all. <laughs> See you in the next video.